three i think i got it this time for some reason i don't know i do not want to go through what i went through last night that was a that was like oh uh, I, I couldn't i can't believe it <laughs> how last night went it's just like out of nowhere it's just like crazy let's get things straight make sure everything is just right everything's just right y'all right no funny noises nothing okay so we can't have that again because that was it was a good discussion that couldn't be heard. And um, like I said, <laughs> it's not going to happen again. I'm not tolerating that. So, you know, power that be or whatever. Because one thing I will tell you is that we're going to do a recap on that show. And I'm probably going to do it um, as a recording. And um, go longer, go harder, go deeper. And I definitely want to get uh, uh, Sister Julia Navians back on. But Julie was bringing some good points that I don't think was really heard. And we have to make sure that we get this information out and really and truly not just reading from uh, a book of facts or statistics, which are accurate and back us up, but for us to share our experiences together with each other. And that's the kind of glue that, that binds everything in. Tracy J, just let me know. Give me the word. <laughs> I want to give Tracy J all credit in the world this particular topic tonight because she is the one who is the brainchild of this. And like I say, I always like to have it where we participate as a community, you know, not any one man upmanship or competition or whatnot. I try my best to keep um, a lot of that stuff away, stuff behind the scenes. That's why there's people that you just don't see here no more. You know, I, I can't, I can't. I've been doing this for so long and I don't want to really give too much energy to it, but I like to do it the way it is. Um, if for some reason there's a power outage, just know that I'll be back on my phone. We have little little bitches sometime, and there's a bunch of lights. One, two, three, four, five. I didn't put the six one on, so that's why I will be sweating. Where's my trusty towel? I don't like a little rag. I like a big towel. Like I just feel like I'm just pulling everything off me, <laughs> right? So let me know, Tracy J. Um, the question that I asked you, if it's yay or nay, you know, just a light discussion. But this is, may not be super long because um, it's, may, maybe you didn't notice, but if you go to landscurve.com, I put up a Patreon that was very adult, right? And I will release it after a week or two, and I'll keep doing it that way because everybody is not financially um, able to even smallest amount. And it's not a charge thing. I do have a membership. I want to be uploading things there, but I can't do a YouTube membership what I can do on Patreon because Patreon, they don't care. YouTube will still get you, even if you have it just for certain members. But I will be putting up some things just for members that will also be on Patreon. But the hot stuff, this was X-rated what I put up today, you know, on Patreon. You want to take a look at it, go take a look at it. The title alone, um, the title alone was, was something else. Yes. Um, Tracy J, let me know if you want to come on in. But the title is, Will Blacks uh, Be Financially Illiterate and Handicapped Forevermore? Sure looks like, like it, right? I mean, it sure looks like it. I mean, I'm not going to say everybody, but most of us, most of us, which I know it's not anybody here because I've had private discussions with people here and, and wherever we are, whatever level we find our own, we're going up and at least we have it here. But... There's so many of us that I've observed, and I'm like, when are you ever going to get it? But it seems like it's more important for us to have the trappings of, of money as opposed to actually having money and know, knowing how to work money. I mean, 
as much as I thought I knew, there's certain things that I didn't know. And now I know, and I hope no more, but I know one thing, discipline, discipline. And it goes much more beyond savings. Well, I've been saving all my life. Yeah. But have you been saving at the rate of inflation? Have you been saving at this rate to keep up with what's going on now? Like I said before, if you had $25,000 back in 1960 in America, you can probably buy whatever middle class, upper middle class house that you wanted. Anyone you wanted. But if you saved and said, well, in the last so many years, I added on another $25,000 in this 2023. Now you have $50,000. Where are you going with, 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 with $50,000 to buy a house? Unless it's a container home on a very small lot. Unless you go way out from the city and way out to the country. So savings not going to do it. So you have to put it in a vehicle that's going to make it compound or make it move. It's currency. Like, like the water current, electrical current, is something that has to keep on moving. And you build on that. But just sitting there holding on to stuff or even saying, well, I get a check every month and I'm going to live off of that. And, and somehow I'll accrue. That's even worse. At least with a check every month, you can put your foot on that and count on that, maybe, but try not to count on that. So there's a lot of things that will keep us in that particular place. It'll keep us from growing. And to compound that on a negative level, we've become the biggest consumers. So how are we going to build wealth? Well, first of all, we have to know where we're going to put it. I'm here to give a class. I'm here to ask questions from what I see. And from what I see, most of us are straight stupid because it seems like, especially in America, and I speak about America all the time, I'm a world citizen. I'm, I'm, I go anywhere in the world that I want to. You know, there may be a lockdown coming soon. I'll be right back here parked up. And I don't care if I don't go anywhere else. I'm just and I'm a citizen of the world so I can think like that. And this is the problem with America and the system in America. They don't want you to think as a world figure. They want you to think as just a so-called citizen, right? Let me see here. And I want to welcome everybody here. And if in Shaka, Master Glam, right? Oyala. Um, let me go down the list. Had not in Sons, Tracy J, forever uh, grateful to you. India, India, in, Indio. <laughs> I saw something in India earlier. Indigo King, 1111. Wow. We got everybody here today. Okay. Now we have Amari Smith, and we have a comment here. Blacks have already mentally, emotionally, spiritually, financially illiterate and handicapped. Well, already, yeah. Yeah. I mean, not everybody, but the most for the most part, we are. And people feed off of us. And we're like a dead animal, and they feed off of us, and they eat our remains. While we're wearing their outfits, their jewelry, their cars, everything out there. We are wearing these things, right? And um, where does it go? The value of it. Does it make us wealthy? Doesn't even make us rich. You want to be wealthy. You don't want to be rich. So for me, I have done things and spent money on businesses and spent money on things to make me better. To, 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 but it seems like as soon as you get there, the goalposts are changed. So for me, I said I'm cutting off from the system that has you running the rat race or running the wheel. And every dollar will be put towards something that can elevate me. Of course, I will help anybody if I'm able to. But I have to elevate with the talents from within, keep my... Uh, footprint very small, where I'm not spending, spending, spending on foolish things, not creating any debts that are going to keep me forever shackled. Young men, be careful of your penis. Yes, it's good to be fruitful and multiply. I'm going to go all the way around with something and come back, right? Yeah. Let me just say, Omar, you, you, you speak in some sense here. Black people stop consuming. You need assets, not material possessions. Make your own, grow your own. Exactly. That's what you have to do. Because, like I said, the very thing that's righteous in the system can be the very thing that 
is a ball and chain on you. Listen, we like women as men. Anybody who likes anything else, I don't know nothing about that. But the bottom line is that pregnancy and unwanted pregnancy and unplanned pregnancies, take your time. Build your family. Stop bringing up these, these women who may not know what they want. I'm not blaming the women or the men. I'm just saying both of y'all because it takes two. Because you can set yourself back financially in a grave manner where you're recuperating because having children are very, very expensive. And then what I'm getting at, when you get caught up with somebody, somebody who doesn't have the sense, who doesn't want to build with you, but it's circumstance and you don't get, you don't stay together and you end up paying child support. That's another thing. How can you fill a bucket when you have several holes in it? You can't do it. Right? So you want to keep things airtight. Young ladies, you know, those who are that type, stop having these babies with all of these different dudes. It's all going to fall on you. And don't think you're getting over if you get uh, the stimulus check or you get uh, uh, the WIC, you get Section 8, and you get the welfare, and you get the state subsidized health care. It's not doing anything for you. Because when those things are pulled from under you, what do you really have? So we're talking about building wealth, and we have been the biggest consumers and we give it up that way. And we feel that we're doing something where we have the biggest car, the biggest house, the best phone, the, the biggest this and the biggest that. But what do you have to pass on to your children? We should always be in a certain movement toward accruing. And I'm no financial master by a long shot. But I'll tell you one thing. We spend too much. We spend too much on things that are not worth anything at all. And so... uh Tracy J, you have anything to say, or should I let you stay in the corner and, and kind of check things out for a while? Just let me know. Kevin Clark, I'm here spying. I see you there, brother. <laughs> but I, I, I'm sick and tired of seeing generation after generation just you spend so much money and you work so hard and you just you die. And there's nothing gained. And it's not just about, oh, you got to get money on this level, because this level is really for the lessons of this world, the spiritual lessons to ascend. The money doesn't matter. Like, but children and your grandchildren have to live here in this system. And, and, and why not make it a little easy since you had the time to approve and teach them? Because we'll be forever financially illiterate and handicapped if we don't learn how to handle money, as soon as we get it in our hand, we get crazy and we want to spend it. We want to buy something or buy this car and parader. I got the brand new so-and-so. I got the brand new Lexus truck. I got the brand biggest bands I got. And there are people in their circle who get jealous of them. You know, oh, you're still in the plantation. I understand. I understand. Yeah, yeah. You logged in. No, that's cool. That's cool. Because I'm not going to be here too late because I've been doing other things. I'm going to probably um, work on some of the back end stuff with the Patreon and stuff like that. I'm going to record something for Patreon every single day on an uncensored level. Maybe 30 minutes or something like that, but something I can't say here that they would definitely take me down on. I also want to reach out to Irritated Genie so we can do something again, but that may be recorded also. Um, maybe on another platform. we got to be funny about that because they trying to take my site down you know let me see here what brother is saying yeah who cares what that else uh who cares about the house is in the car is your hearse <laughs> they're not gonna have a u-haul attachment that's funny that's real funny and indigo king says what now right i have money that i may never touch exactly and then you have to look at the abstract way your health how much you're extracting out of this life because you can have money at the end, but if you're miserable, what good is it? If you're miserable and you're not enjoying the sunsets and the rising of the sun and the fresh air and the laughing and the, the good food and all of those good things that are free, the experience of life, money means nothing at all. I've reinvented myself so many different times, and I've been written off more times than you could imagine. Oh, yes, is it for Lance? He can't go past this. He'll never get over that. Now, look at me here now. I'm in the motherland, doing well, 
I'm not a millionaire, but I'm doing well. I'm moving forward with what I know. Like I said, I've been written off so many times from decades ago, and I'm still here and doing well and have my sanity. That's the main part. It's not how much you have or not how much money you have. It's what you don't spend. It's not the age, but it's the wear and tear. How much wear and tear? I don't know. Maybe I've been able to take a whole lot, but we have to prioritize how we live and how we move about this earth and how we see money, how we see our own personal energy and our time. Because like I always say, time is an artificial construct on this level. It's very much real. It's very much real. In the afterlife, there is no time. There's just a state of being. And when you look out in nature, does the animals out in nature care if it's Sunday or not? Oh, oh, it's Sunday. I got to get ready for work Monday morning. Oh, man, the weekend went by so fast. The animals are chill every single day. All they know is the sun comes up, the sun goes down. I got to get something to eat. It's all provided for me. I got to watch my back because I am on a certain level of the food chain, and I got to be careful. But when you look at the animals out on what they say is the so-called wild, they're living more peaceful than us. Even though they have predators and they have, they can eat that fruit or fruits or different things, they don't seem to be too worried. You know, they don't seem to be too worried at all. Master Glam, let me hear what you're talking about here. I was watching a documentary here on YouTube where a black woman was talking about the socioeconomic difference between poor middle class and the wealthy. Clearly, the wealthy have more time and to speak to the children and teach them new words. Wow, the lower income families tell their children that they are, are right or, and they are wrong and, they, and, and their vocabulary isn't that great. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I said many have need to have control with money. You know, and Master Glam corrected that she said meant to say that the low income tells their children they are bad and they're wrong. It's the stress of working to survive. I don't want that. That's why I, I left the system early, according to how they had it laid out. I had people coming to me and, hey man, why don't you why don't you stay another six years when you're 64? I left before 58. And, and, and I didn't have money coming in from the company for about a year and a half. I had my other stuff I was doing. And I got to that point and I put in for it. I'm like, man, 58? I'm like, yeah, I'm not even in the country no more. I'm not coming back. Whatever you give me, I give me. You give me. I mean, it's a little bit, but I mean, I get it for the rest of my life. You know, and I'm not even counting on Social Security. What I'm saying is that these things you do, it's a, it, it's, it's a foothold, but there are other things that you can do and I want to speak to the younger folks on that, that you can earn money at a fast rate, but you got to do something with it. You got to put it into something. You just can't lay it up in the bank and just look at it. You got to put some action behind it. Because re really right now, once my home is completed, I'm seeking to make the biggest financial gains in my life to go beyond what a job said for me to do. I really feel that. I really feel I have the balance on the inside. I have the time now. I mean, time is important. I mean, we can piddle away the whole day doing stupidness. Or we can say, you know what? I'm offered a job where that was mandatory for a time, but I'm going to put my 12 hours a day. Me, last night was the earliest that I went to bed. It was like after it was about 1230 for me, right? And um, I usually get to bed like five, six in the morning. And I jumped up from the crack of dawn today. I did those two recordings, Patreon. Uh, me and Mr. Skurv made one, and I made one. Like I said, the, the title is so adult. <laughs> uh, anybody here saw the title of that, uh, that that recording I did for Patreon? Just let me know here. No, okay, Indigo King says here, I met a young lady earlier from the Congo. She wants to help children in need. I vibe with her for a bit. I told her about the show. She, she, she seemed to be pretty interested. Sure, Indigo King, director. She'll, she'll, we'll let her on and we'll talk. Just, just let me know, and, and we'll set it up. That same day, the day whatever is good for her, you know how we do. You know, that's how we do. And I want to I wanna hear, I have some other people that are going to be coming on on subsequent shows to talk about different things. And it's very, very interesting with people. There are a lot of people out here who really have a lot of knowledge on certain things and perspectives. And it's, it's something really, really interesting, more so than what you look at on CNN, Headline News, Fox, BBD, and everything stiff and just 
present it to you to brainwash you, or they don't tell you the whole deal. I want to hear from people in different countries. I want to hear from people of different cultures and mindsets, mentalities, and even on the financial level. You know, because I was listening to an old Andrew Tate uh, a video the other day, and it made sense. He says, why do you say you're going to have to come out here and make money? You know, um, yes, the children need a lot of our help and attention. They need, they need lots of nourishment. On so many different levels, they need the nourishment. You know, they need to have that sense of esteem because if they don't have that, no matter how much you teach them about money or life, it'll roll right off them if they don't have that knowledge of themselves, not even belief, knowledge. Like, see, with me, there's certain things that I know that to go through as an, it's an obstacle in front of me, but I will defeat it. And I know I can defeat it. There's no doubt here that I can defeat certain things. I don't say, I don't know. I don't know if I could do it. No, I'm a champion. I surmount challenges. I, I don't have problems. I have challenges. That's something I say to myself every single day, not just for the show. Omari Smith says, again, I am, uh, I'm being a different name, but Lance helped me when I was going through a hard time. And I, I now no longer smoke. I, I make $20 an hour. Great, great. So great. I just got a raise and I'll be making 20 an hour. Yes. Yes. You change your name. It's okay. We, you don't have to say whatever name we knew you as. Um, wow. 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 Thank you. Thank you for that testimony. That makes me feel good. You see, that's currency. And it doesn't mean money. It could be an encouraging word. It's whatever it takes to get a person moving. You feed into them. And you feed into them in an unselfish way. And we speak about money all the time, but money comes from these things, these intangibles that we have when we share an encouraging word with each other. It's not just money. You know, um, I don't know whether it's money I handed to you, Amari, or a, an encouraged word, or do we sat down and power for a couple hours at night when I was on the phone, maybe doing some editing. I do that. When I'm editing and somebody calls me, we talk, we talk for hours. And folks will be like, I talked to you for four hours. I can't believe this. I said, well, most of my stuff online that I do is not the shows. This is the easy point for me. Talk, I'm a talker. It's easy for me to talk. I can talk Don King. Trust me. You know, I can hear that. Oh, God, I met this brother named Liz. Oh, <laughs> he talked me to death. Right? But yeah, yeah. Um, the financial boost doesn't always come from giving money or a loan. It could in the help and the gap, but it can also be the enthusiasm, encouragement, and motivating somebody. That's just as valuable because we can take a person who is not motivated at all and put a million dollars in the pocket. Either it'll be still be sitting there or it'll be spent up in a foolish way unless you motivate them with a little bit of the uh, uh, literacy. Um, literacy, not illiteracy, right? Here it is. If you have land, a home, a safe roof over your head, you're, pre you're at a pretty good start. That's all we need. Food can be gone. That's right. That's right, Master Glam. You are wise. Make investments, not purchases. That's right. Yeah. You see that? It's true. You can never truly own a home due to annual land taxes. And that's why I wanted to get out of the country because of that very thing and the eminent domain and all that stuff. Um, the taxes here up in those mountains, it's next to nothing. Right now, it's next to nothing. Next to nothing, that's one of the things. You know, it may not be like that for everybody because we have the more populated areas of the crop. The last I checked, it was 40 bucks a year. 40 bucks a year. It's nothing up there. They're going to be building the university soon, but if you want to have your garbage privately taken away, you got to pay for it. It's not something that's given to you that you can pay for. Education you pay for. You have the free stuff going on, and then you have the ones that you pay for. But you get what you pay for. So overhead, my thing is, you can get so much every month on a retirement or even go out and work so much and come home to visit where you work the wheel. You're not home. Like I said before, isn't it something that sometimes we are sick at home and we say, man, it's nice being here. I haven't sat down in this living room for a long time like this because you're used to getting up, going, come. Nah, nah, nah. I didn't want that past the age of 60 for me. And, you know, um, let me see. Amari, thank you so much. You have to be the great person because I had to see something in you 
to invest whatever it may have been. Um, for you to come back and say thank you makes my day. It, it validates my life. Um, it's not like I just want to hear things about me. I'm this great guy, whatever have you. But I mean, unless you told me that I would have never known. And there are things that you do and you do it to keep currency going. Because see, most of us, we look at it like this. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. If I have it, I want to put something out to the universe to keep certain things in motion that will one day come back to me. That maybe if I had a, a down day this week coming up and I think about you, what you said to me, Elmery, um, that will feed me and boost me back. So anything that's given doesn't have to come back the same way. But whatever you need, you need. Do you see the animals out in the so-called wild stressing? You know, you don't see no crocodile. Oh, I'm having a nervous breakdown. So I got to take my medication. So I feel suicidal. They're connected to the universe, connected to each other. If we're righteous, we're connected to each other. And that's what we forget. But we don't want to be connected to the negativity out here. That is some sometime like a Trojan horse and people who seem to be good, right? Let me see here. Sister Yala got something to say. Many black people don't have that mindset. The minute they receive me, they go ham. You're right. You're right. You're right. That's right. Challenges, y'all. That's what it's all about. And you're a champion, so you get over that. Yes, black people always immediately start buying stuff because they're programmed to do so. Nephi, how are you? I'm glad to see you here. Yes, yes. I read a little comment that you made. And I hope to make it again. You know, we, we, and this is some people think I was going to be sitting up in front of a board somewhere. Like, okay, to, and if you invest eighteen thousand today and you get no, no, invest in yourself. We know that there's certain rules out here, but you have to invest in yourself. Lance is a superconductor. He can pour out and pour out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I make it a point to refuel through reading, through talking, through vibing, and through loving. I'm not going to invest my love in negative people that will take it as a sponge and turn around and hate other people. Why I can keep going on like this and not having some kind of meltdown in this world is because I have so many good people connected to me in love, real love, right? Some of them are a little lusty, but we're talking about real love, right? You know, I throw a joke in there. But um, that's what it's all about, to go out and vibe and experience life to the fullest. Today, I got up very early, and I recorded the two things, and I fell out. I could not believe after getting that good amount of sleep, but I had a fatigue debt from all these years before. data for three days straight, you got to pay up. So I said, something told me I have to go to the shower. I said, let me lay down for a second, get my thoughts together before I go out, because I had to top off my internet today. Boom, I fell out. It was 8.30. I fell out and didn't wake up to about 1.30. And Mrs. Skirv had already left like from 7.45 to go up to the mountain. She had all her seeds. She has all these seeds. I mean, she had, I mean, Ziploc bags and packages categorized, and she sprayed it out on, on the bed. I'm like, wait a second. I felt like, like you know, that club owner that when you work in a club off the books and you do bouncing or do certain things and they have the money out, okay, this is for you, this is for you, this is for you. I'm like, where are you going with all these seeds? She says, not yet. It's not time. It's time for these, but it's not time for those. And I got to make sure she had all these grow bags, right? Because we have these goats that will, we don't have the wall up yet that will come on property and stuff starts growing and they eat, eat it away. So she has these big grow bags that you put the soil in and you put whatever in. So what's going to stop them from eating on that? Put those up on the balcony, way up on the top balcony, and nothing's going to come up there. So she has a plan. Then you transplant it. You have it covered with the mesh and let it grow, 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 and good because we're going to build a greenhouse also. This is her thing. Like me doing this stuff and learning stuff new, this is her thing. You know what I mean? So I can't knock for it. Um, we're all going to benefit from it. I had promised before I was going to take the camera and go up, but I didn't realize I had to go top off the internet because today would have been the day that we went up there. So maybe the weekend, probably not, but Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday Wednesday in there, we're going to go up there to the property and get some Mrs. Skirt footage and 
wisdom and, and just how to get angles. I know how to keep it centered and look down on what I'm going to bring some good stuff. Out. No less than two hours. I'll cut it a little bit, but no less than two hours, right? Master Glam says, so true, people have furniture that they didn't even enjoy. It's all a game. It's true. When you realize you're visiting home when you're working these jobs and you don't have the time, but you make the money, but you don't have the time, that's a sour place to be. I used to sit there behind the wheel of the bus driving through some beautiful neighborhoods, and didn't have the time because oh, I got to make this money. I got to work and do some extra hours. To, no more. Take my overhead away. Reduce, my thing is reducing overhead. If my overhead was so much thousands, whatever, why can't I get it down to 600? Why can't I get it down to 400? Why can't I get it down to 200? Why can't I set myself free and not owe anything at all? Not where you say, oh, my house was paid for. But you're paying all these taxes. Taken out from what you have. No. I'd rather get my taxes for the next 40 years. Say, okay, I'll see you when I'm around 100. It's not that long, but I'm going to push through that. And you can give me a for paying you the lump sum to invest in other things. So for the rest of the time, no more taxes. Isn't there a place you can do that where you can pay utilities like a huge lump sum and they get this money and, and they don't ever, like for the rest of your life, like they calculate and they say, okay, we'll take this but we'll never charge you again. I don't know. I think I heard that somewhere. Maybe in a different country. I'm not sure. But this is by design. While we are financially illiterate, which brings us into a place of being handicapped financially. Because they don't really tell us this in school, teach us this in the public schools. And if you don't know it as a parent, there's no way that you're going to, there's no, there's, there's no way you're going to learn it if or teach it if you don't know it. There's no way. So we have to pass this stuff down. I bet you one thing, the people who are in charge of certain, you know, the word that Kanye said a whole lot of and different ones and the nepotism within the families in these companies, they make sure no matter what to keep it amongst themselves. They make sure to keep the money that's bouncing around amongst themselves. And they're not letting it go. And they don't care if they don't like the guy within their community. They're going to make sure that it stays within because they'd rather stay together where they can go to each other. Look, we, we, what supermarkets do we have? I'm quite sure, America, we have supermarkets. I'm quite sure down in Miami somewhere, in New York somewhere, we have little supermarkets here and there. But why can't we expand it even more so? How can Chinese come all the way from another country, half of them not speaking a language, and bring their bodies physically to work, and they're not worried about, well, am I going to get an escalate out of this? Am I going to get this out of this? Am, am I no, they're saying, listen, you're part of a whole, and their mindset is different. And people have told me, well, you always talk about the Chinese. You putting them above us? No. You, you putting them above you every time you take your money to go spend with them. Don't I'm pointing it out, and I'm not spending with them. But you coming at me for pointing it out, and you taking your money and spending with them. Even find somebody who has some fake hair that's black that's selling it. Go past the Chinese and Asian places. You get mad when I point it out. But you don't have a damn word to say when you out here doing the damn thing, making them wealthy. How about that? How about that for the people who don't know me and go to come in the comments and say, you keep putting up with the Chinese. Well, they doing the damn thing. When we came out here to Accra, we came out here into the unknown. Worse, we had people in our inner circle who for the longest wanted to do us in. And not sincere. And so we had to recuperate from that more so necessary because, you know, ain't no blood out here for me except her. And it's a marriage, and it's deeper than that. You understand? So I had that mentality even within myself. I know my work ethic. I don't have to depend on others. It would be nice if you can work on up with others, but when others begin to reveal that they're narcissistic and want to be in control, and you're out here now, you better listen to me. And We're supposed to all work along together for the common cause. But many of us don't have it in our hearts way. 
and want to harness the energies of others who are talented around them for their own selfish benefit and ego benefit. No, I didn't come through all that I've come through. I may joke a lot and make things seem light, but I've come through so much to get to this point and all of a sudden relinquish this to someone who just wants to be the leader. No, we all work alone. We all pull together. If not, you do your thing because I know as nutty as I am, I know my work ethic and I know there are other people who will follow through with that spirit. You don't know who's around you until, you know, stuff hits the fan. And you got to be prepared for that also. And if you let it affect you, it will affect your wealth, your rich, which is usually come first. And then wealth is something that's long-standing. I'm letting some comments go by here. Let me see what I'm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm seeing some comments here. Al Marie Smith, you invest in yourself financially, emotionally, and spiritually. Otherwise, your money ain't worth nothing. That's what I mean. That's what I was just saying, basically. I didn't even see the comment. That's truth. Yes, live life and do whatever you enjoy. So pull yourself out of the system. And it's not easy, but it's not hard either. It's, it's, it's a thing that we have to know. It's not really hard. I'm not going to say it's just you just can go somewhere. No, no. You're going to plan your exit out. You often have to pay your way out of the system. Granted, listen, I'm still in the system. I'm still in the system. It's like the quicksand that is up to your shoulders and you feel like you're going to drown. And you grab onto that branch that's, that's part of the tree and you pull yourself out. So now you're up to it in haste. And you pull yourself some more and now you're into it in your knees. I got one leg out and I got one leg in and still swallowed up from the knee down. Pull it at me hard because it knows I'm going to get out. There's certain things I realize I don't even need. Before I left America, I gave away all my clothes, most of them, because it would have been too hot. Even though I was living in Florida, there's heat here when it wants to be. I had nice clothes. But I said, why do I need to bring all these things? I'm not going to wear them. And I'm bringing to unknown, but there's a lot of unknown. I got some nice pieces in there, right? But I got shorts and T-shirts. What am I doing when I'm out here? I'm behind here. I'm walking down the street. Just light as I need. When functions happen, I will, I will purchase as I need to build up again to a certain point. But I'm not trying to have that amount. And I didn't even wear half of those things. Those were nice things that Mrs. Scurry saw my size, went to the mall, and they were on sale. Of course, Mrs. Scurry makes sure that it's a reduced price. Like, hey, it's the price now. Let's wait on this. Or she'll talk to the people. You know, oh, wait till two weeks because it's going to go down from this shirt's going to go down from $150 to about $39 in two weeks. So she like, listen, here's 10 bucks. Go get some coffee. Um, put that to the side for me. <laughs> and so I come over, look at the closet, like, wow, how much did that cost? She's like, it didn't cost that much. But I only wore those. I worked and I had a uniform. That saved me a whole lot, right? I'm having to deal with the clothes. But really, a lot of the things we want are the very things that bog us down, you know? Um, that's the goal, Master Glam, to be free like a bird, to be free like a cat. Well, that's land bound, so I'd rather be a bird fly because, you know, you got a dog and all kinds of things trying to get at you. But, but, but you're born into the system that snatches you up and basically dictates this is going to be life for you. And so since it's already been, I guess I'm going to work. This no, there's some people who, who earn and they don't work. They're born into a system, their system. That benefits them. Why can't we look out for our children this way? We, we're looking to get stuff for now. But wouldn't you like to know that you can be a, a, a millionaire, a billionaire in the next generation because of what you set up wisely? And the children that you have, you teach them financial literacy. And you try within your circles to supply your every need and not get frivolous and want to go spend outside the circle. You see what I mean? That's what, what happens. Let me see. Um, a rebuke and condemn all women with a spirit. You will not come anywhere near this man's energy. Yeah, there's a lot of succubuses out here. A lot. And it's a different culture out here, right? Let me see. Oh, dang. I drank this apple juice so fast. Oh, uh, right? I got to get some water in a little while. But, but that's there. 
Um, but once your mind is made up, how you're going to live, I break it down in a certain way. Listen, I'm not, not segmenting my life away, but we need to know where a blip is on the radar screen. And in April, I turned 60 years old. What the hell I look like running behind all these? Let me tell you something. Let me be real about it. You got some some fine women out here. Oh, you got fine women out in America, in Canada. You got half of the American in Canada fine women here in the chat room with me. <laughs> but on a serious note, and, and, and many of these women who are here are on a serious mission. It's about the money. And, they, and I was just talking to somebody about this. They will fool you and really make you think that they observed it out here. And they've tried I was out here for nine months by myself. Mr. Scurry went to America for a father's funeral, and I was here. And I knew what I was up against. So I stayed in half the time. There were women knocking on the door who knew me from YouTube because the word got out as I moved here. And they were knocking on the door. Oh, can I help you clean up? Maybe, you know, a woman's touch. And, you know, maybe we can spend time so you're light on. You know, I, I, I got a heavy curtain over this one window. I'm on the second floor that you can kind of see light on when you walk down. I put my other green screen, because this wall painted behind me is green, but I have a portable green screen that I can lift up, I can take anywhere with me. I lifted it up and kept that to just keep all the light out. And still, people would knock on my door at 2 and 3 in the morning time with, with the yellow mini skirts covering half their backside. You know, rest out and everything. No, I want to help you. Can I hang out with you? Right, you, you want me to you want to help me clean up already? I know exactly what it is, right? Come out here and see panties hanging on your um, doorknob or the door handle. Uh, stiletto, red heels right up against the door. A little powder sprinkled around so you can touch it. I've been through it out here. I've been through it out before because even where we used to live in Orlando, before we sold the house, we'd wake up and see, you know, birds with the seeds. And I was told that that was a vicious, vicious form of witchcraft. Of course, the panties that were left out there because we had a corner lot and there was no wall. You could just walk up and toss something, you know. And my little room studio at the time was way back. I didn't know that. You know, so, you know, I think for me, it's a joke. I think I'm the most, I'm going to say it this way. I'm the most witchcrafted man in the whole planet that you want to know. But you know what? They're mad because it seems like it don't work. I'm still here. I'm nuts like that. I've seen things, I've, I've experienced things, you're waking up, something standing over, all stuff. Does it bother me? No, because my mother was a praying mother, not just relegated to a, a Christian thing, but on a spiritual level. My father was a strong man, you know, right, morally upright, but it was my mama who put the protection on for the longest time and prayed for me. That's why, I, look, all the pretty crazy things I did, I'm still here. So you who practice your little flim flam foolishness, because most of it that they do is not real anyway. It's not the real deal. And it's done in in a in an unrighteous way. Evil, it doesn't work. Watch yourself, it's gonna come back to you. Long before you started thinking about doing these things to me, I was covered and I moved that way. When I was in America, I spoke boldly. I spoke my mind. There were all kind of uh agencies and people watching. It didn't scare me, you know. I lost my job because of that and still had people taking pictures of me late at night after I come home from bouncing. With a, what is that for? What are you scared of me for? Because of, of, of how I think and I don't move in fear? I wasn't made to be in that system. I'm a clot to the system. I'm a clot that blocks your circulation and kills you off. And you don't want anybody to inspire you that uh, other people that way. I'm not all of that. I'm just a regular dude, but in my lane, I'm going to do what I have to do. I'm not going to move in fear. That'd be the worst thing for me to do. And I'll get back on, on topic, but that'd be the worst thing for you to do is to move in fear. Of what? I wasn't put here by something so mighty that created the universe to move in fear. Of what? You can beat me down. You can put a bullet in me. You can put poison in me. But you know what? I'm very elusive. It's going to be a, a hard time to get me. And if you get me, I'm coming back. If you get me, my energy is still part of creation. If you get me, there's a debt on you that you might not be able to pay. So why should I walk in fear? I don't understand it. Why should I walk in fear? Fear of who? Fear of what? 
If you're smaller than me, you're bigger than me. If I have to fight anybody, I don't care if you're a little person, I'm going to fight you like you're a giant. If you're a big person than me, I'm going to fight you like you're a mountain. If you beat me, you have to fight me every time you see me. It's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be dressed up with your woman in a restaurant. Oh, God, here comes Lance again. I'm going to pull off the whole tablecloth, put it over your head, beat you down. You might get me then. I'm going to keep coming back. See, this thing inside of me, I see past what's in front of me. I already see the haters already. I, I, I've known haters from the day one that they were haters, and I allowed them to stay in a certain space, and I know when they're going to go. I learned from them. They kept me on my toes. This is no joke for me. This is not me reading off of a script. But there are certain people out here that want to keep us at each other, keep us poor and poor-minded. When you look at every sunset, when you go to the beach, that's yours because you're part of it. You don't have to go to a bank account and say, well, you own percent of the beach, whatever. You can go and you experience it. That's what life is all about, this experience. The flip side of the money thing is getting so caught up in that we forget to have the experiences that are gifted to us for free that will keep us motivated to walk over and above and, and everything else. And the man's mean money will come to you. It'll pick up feet and run to you. If you focus on yourself and cultivate those seeds of greatness from within, the money chases you. It came to me even yesterday, an offer was made to me in a very unique fashion. I'm a company in America, and I'm not going to say so much about it. It's a one-time, two-time thing, but I see beyond that because they're going to want me back. You understand? Just what you do online, you think people are not noticing. I know a guy in Orlando, Florida, on Hiawassee Road, who set up a th on the corner where he was repairing shoes. And, you know, I mean, the cops would run him because, oh, you can't be out here type thing. He kept coming. People that looked at him, eh, nothing much. Hey, he repaired people's shoes and made custom shoes, and that guy has a huge shop, and you can't keep people out of there. And, yes, you're going to have to pay for those type of shoes because it's handcrafted. It's guaranteed to last a long, long time. Listen, y'all, I'm going to hit not a bathroom break, but a grabbing of water break. It's not going to take no more than a minute. So give me a second. I'll be right back. It didn't take too long. I did it. Lips getting dry. I got those pookie from New Jack City crackhead lips going on right now soon. <laughs> Woo, that was good. Let me come back to the chat room and vibe. I'm loving it. Um, I'm feeling it. Okay, let me see where we are. Okay. Did I see the show this one already? Okay, yeah, it didn't move for me. Everything, I have to kind of scroll. I don't want to miss anybody here. Okay. Oh, man, I'm far back. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Tracy J says, people don't want to crawl before they walk anymore. I remember my first vehicle being used and was grateful. And was grateful that I didn't have to walk or catch public transportation. That's the main thing, being grateful you have from the inside. You know, people will ridicule you and say things. And sometimes that... Um, you know, when you have people around you that are younger and people do things like that, you know, let me see here. That's right, Nephi, stop buying Asian because they don't give a damn about us. That's number one. What, what's the first wealth tip you can give her? Stop buying a Asian. That's from Nephi. <laughs> wow. Let me, let me scroll on down. Let's turn into a party now. Yeah. Okay. Whether you buy Asian, white, and black, the money is uh, all still goes to the same. Yeah, that's right. Well, let's become our own master. Let's let, let's 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 take it. Let's take the money. Like Andrew Tate said, "Don't make, don't think about making money. Take the money." You know, and we don't mean going to rob a bank or rob somebody, but just take what's there. Because we're really not making money, especially if the government prints it up. They can print it up. I don't know where, but we got to struggle. And make this thing by giving away our time. The artificial construct of time level. 
that freaked me out when I realized when I first came here how certain actions of living were inexpensive to the point where even many people here don't know what they have. I was speaking to somebody today about that. They don't know what they have. And they're trying to come to America and go to the UK. For what? And they find out. They find, yes, you can get in professions and you're, you're the doctor and all. There's a lot of money still in America, but not for the majority of people. You see what I mean? The main thing is setting yourself and putting yourself in a position. I have no doubt that financially I will be so much better off and really not even clocking it, not even paying it on mine. And I'm not bragging because I don't have like that right now. I'm telling you from now, I'm projecting. But strategically, you got to move yourself in position. And sometimes you can find yourself. Look, there were a lot of times in my life when I could have gave up. On an emotional level, I could have gave up. Just could have gave up. So, oh, man, if I believe some of the people who whisper, well, what are you going to do now? It looks like this. Well, look like, oh, man, how are you around me telling me this way when I'm so far down? Lots of times by my own choices, bad choices. I made a lot of bad choices. I got involved with some women that, you know, took some time here and there. But this way, I'm like, okay, you got this. This is going to take me time to recover from this. Okay, you got this. But this will never happen again. It will never going to survive this. First, I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> I, you know, some of uh, Gloria Gaynor was like 1975, right? Survive. You know, don't give up. Survive until you can really live. Hold on and don't give up. Everything is not going to remain the same. The factors around you will change. Even if the factors inside of you for now, because of the situation that you're in, can't change or won't change for a while. I mean, this ain't gonna change for a while. I'm gonna be paying out this money for the longest time. Okay, but factors around you will change. And when you're able to get an ish to move up or to the side or backward, not backward, fall backward, but sometimes you go two feet backward. If you're up on that car too close and you can't move, and you can back up and get around them. You, you got to think this way. Every, every challenge have a, has a solution. So with the whole money thing, you can make it. Yeah, exactly, Tracy uh, J. Whatever happens to gradual success, everyone wants immediate success, right? And we've been through a lot since we came out here. We touched, we touched down uh, uh, September 16th, 2020, 21, 22, 23. This September will be three years. And our plan would have moved faster than that. We didn't know Mrs. Scurry's father, my father-in-law, was going to pass away. We had a decision to make. Do I come with you or do I stay here? Or little, lots of things that stalled things. You know, if you want to make the creator laugh, tell him your plans. Creator, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. He's laughing like, oh, really? I'm the one in charge here. But you do have a say-so in how things go. And you do have to have a plan because just like with getting arrested, if you don't have an attorney, what will be assigned to you? And that, that public defender that you have assigned to you don't even know your name after six months of dealing with your case. You don't want him. You don't want him. So you better have a plan ahead of time, your own plan. That usually works out better. This universe works that way. When you're forward thinking and you have a plan and you say, listen, this is what I, because you're visualizing this head here, this third eye, this, this essence, this energy that you can't see. See, you see eyes, nose, mouth, ears, whatever. That's not me. This is what I'm chilling out in. This is what encases my energy. And one day this is going to go back to the earth and my energy is going to float on wherever it got to go. I don't know where it is, but it's perfect order here. Mass is up. So since I know that, I know that as long as I keep coming, because we're all creators, whether you want or not, you may not be the greatest artist in the world, but you're a creator. Didn't you arrange the furniture in your living room? Didn't you cook the food that you're eating? You did something of your own that was creative to your liking. You are a creator. So you can create life. You can, we create life, right? Sometimes we're not thinking about the creation of life going through the motions because it feels so good now, right? But in the end, we create life. 
Master Glam says, I haven't got my nails done in years because I don't want to support them. I make my own Chinese food if I'm craving Lil Wayne. Those people hate us but love our money. That's right. You're doing the right thing. Ain't nothing wrong with liking a Lil Wayne. Make it yourself because Master Glam's Lil Wayne is going to be better than theirs and more nutritious. We don't know what these people are putting in our foods. You know? All right, yeah, taxes are absolutely evil. You are so right. You know? And instantaneous success, like Oyana says. Let me see here. I can come in and say a few words on the topic. I'm on myself. Come on, come on. Come on in. Come on in. Let me get the uh, invite for you. I didn't see that until because I've been scrolling down for the longest master glam. So here it is. Here it is. Oh, I forgot. I got to do it diff differently now. Bing. Okay. Talk to me, sister. It's coming. Here it come. Okay, it should be there. I missed out on a lot of comments. Black people were better off financially during the time of segregation and then in integration. And that because we had to deal with each other due to the segregation laws. Beautiful time that I didn't get a chance to experience, but I heard about it. But the remnants of it were still in pockets all over the country. You know, little blocks where you had block it to little, you know, black businesses. But how was it that? Others are allowed to come in and do business, and we don't choke them off. Why is it that black businesses are suffering, and we let them suffer? It, 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 it indicates the health of our community if our black businesses are failing. And it's only failing because of us. We, are, we have to sustain that. We should take that as an insult and an embarrassment when you have black bookstores, right? Like in Philadelphia, you have Black and Noble. Half of our children should be there all the time. The adults, we should be, have, have supported that place. Why, why, why? Okay, here we go. Tracy J in the house. Okay, make sure it says device not connected. I can see you. But if you look in it, it says, it speaks about the audio or the um, video. You don't have to show the video if you don't want to. Um, you can just keep your audio, whichever way. Master Glam 2, it's there. You can come on in. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Let's see what's going on here. It was right after the civil rights study. That study, the civil rights movement happened. Push for integration. There's no coincidence. Um. Okay, let me see. Right. Yes, Africa Leaks. Be no Nobody's stopping her. But I think she has some people in her ear right now. Honest to God truth. <laughs> you can come on in when you're ready. But those others that don't or maybe can't come back don't want you to come back. Should, with this YouTube thing, me, I said a mouthful when I said that, did I? Like I said, let's get on this thing and do something positive. Let's get on this thing. And Tracy J, um, fiddle around with your device because it says it's not connected, right? But this, this YouTube thing has been a big speed bump for our advancement. We have more knowledge shared and passed around. We have access to information instantaneously. It's like we have every Britannica uh, uh, encyclopedia in the palm of our hands. Every book almost. I mean, some books you have to buy, they're not going to let you get. But we have websites where you can read some books for free. We have all of this stuff at our disposal, yet we haven't conquered ourselves. And, you know, it's not even just YouTube, but it's a social media engineered experiment, the social experiment, and knowing how we are as black people where I don't care if people don't like me. I'm not here to be liked. I don't care if one brother has more hits on his page. And look, I, I've been doing this. Mrs. Skurve was going to come on, but she'll come on tomorrow. I can hear her. She's got the bedroom door closed, so she's talking to somebody, probably family or somebody. And that's that's how we flow. We got this one. We had a microphone in the bed. I'm like, yo, we got to get this. And I put it up on Patreon. But people come, people go. People have egos. People... Sometime 
I'm not saying her necessarily. They they want to be like if there's nothing to say, I just want you to be in, and watch me on the camera. If there's nothing to say, even if you don't see me on the camera, I want you to hear me. Don't go. Let's keep it here the same way. I see you, Tracy J. That's just one thing I'm just not gonna get into. You know. Yes. I see you here, Tracy J, but again, it's it's it takes some get used to it. Something simple. One of them little tabs on it is very simple. Just hit some buttons, let's see what happens. I see you here and I see your name. But for me, it says device not connected. And like for us, as, as smart as we are, as much knowledge as we have, we don't need to be in this position you're in. We are the best of the best. Whenever you see the best of anything and it doesn't, maybe the majority doesn't involve us, you best believe, trust and believe, there's one of us in the back room driving that company, that industry, our ideas that they have stolen. They use us. We are the best of the best. You can't convince me. And pff, what? Oh, some of them are good. There ain't nobody better than us. We're everywhere. We can do anything. But why are we at the Lotus, the Lotus, <laughs> Lotus, that's a sexual show, right? Anyway, why are we at the lowest end of the totem pole when it comes to our financial health? That we, with our talents and abilities, can make everybody else rich and wealthy, laid back, old with liver spots, looking like the one they called the queen, right? Old as heck. They drinking people's blood and taking people's organs. We know that but enjoying it all the way through as long as they can and, and transitioning their mind in a grand way because we, we know what's waiting for her. Well, you know, she's dealing with it right now. Trust me, the blood that she has on her hand, it's karma. Nature's perfectly balanced. Let me, let me sip this thing. <sighs> we can be vicious with each other. And want to outdo and want to. No, I strip ego every single day. Oh, Tracy, I see you again. Um, let's try it a different way. If you want. Um, I was going to say call on and I'll play around with the Bluetooth, but the Bluetooth has been messing up on me. But there's something that you're not doing. On. I'm not blaming it on you saying, oh, it's you, you, you. But when the situation happens, it happens a lot to people who are new. And, um, it kind of malf not malfunctions, just that there's something you got to push. When you get to that screen, you know, allow them to take control of your device. Even if you don't want your face shown, I won't show it. I'll keep it if you want to stay anonymous, I'll do that. Now, if you come on with your screen, I'll see it. The world won't see it. It had been some embarrassing situations. Like, but you told me you wouldn't see me. I'm like, listen, cover your chest up, please, girl. We're not on. I'm not putting you out there, but you don't want me to see those things. That's for your man. <laughs> those things have happened. Let me just see. This is some good stuff. Um, yeah. Bill K. King. Yes. This world has a short life, and that what we as so-called black people need to yeah, exactly. Exactly. Any man I saw almost 60 years old when I was 13 or 15, even I'm like, man, he old. Now I'm looking at him every day. I'm, I'm cool with the system because I know that I'm not going to die. I'll transition from here. But this is one big, perfectly, we, we go crazy over man's systems. But we don't understand how far brilliant the one we're in naturally is. These blurred buildings behind me on green screen that's fake. There's just a green wall behind me, but this makes it look real, right? A lot of people don't, they don't tell you that, right? They make it real to them. Like, man, I love. sometimes it is. But we go crazy over man-made stuff, things that, whether you want to call it creator or a god or a system, I don't care what you, it's something. It's something bigger and better than us allowed us to be here. We didn't make this. I didn't make me. 
How would I know to put two eyes right here, a nose and, and a mouth and have it all connected with the ears and the neck? A brilliant body where everything's encased in my torso and I have limbs, legs to run and arms and fingers to gather things and eat? Not that good. And I don't think any of us are that good. And this is not by chance. So if this is brilliantly made not by chance, then guess what? What comes after will be waiting for us. You can go out in, in, in nature, pick the mangoes and watermelons and vegetables. You can take the wooden build structure, stuff out the ground and make the concrete, water, and everything for free. And then this wicked man stepped in and didn't want you to have that relationship with nature was free, which would have kept us all together and very much wealthy. We would have been happy without any money. We'd be happy if we just had ourselves with no ego. As soon as money came into the picture, oh, I, I'm going to try to get more than you so I can act like I'm better than you. I'm better than you because I make more than you. We, we lost the value in each other. I've said it so many times. I think I said too much. If we knew the value of each other, we would have no need for money. I'm going to say it again like I always say it. If take, take 50 closest people. Now, I know about 50 people are not going to be close. Maybe the first three will be, and then after that, it dissipates. But 50 people you know who don't steal, that might be hard to find too. We got family members who who yoke you for your money, right? Of whatever you got. Let me get this man. I'm a whole, I'll bring it back. I'll bring it back next week. And you see it 10 years thrown down somewhere in, in your brother-in-law's basement with dust all over it. And you're like, he never gave me this thing back. I'm going to have to bypass all these uh, comments. Um, I, I missed out on so many. So if I have something that I'm, yeah. Okay. Okay, Tracy J. And we, we'll do some test runs for the future shows. And stuff because sometimes it's just it could be the device or whatever. Um, yeah, but yes, I know you do. Y'all, I have my own little black business, it just needs growth and flourishing, and it is it just it just takes time, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we got to do that, you know. But yeah, like I said, um, when people are going through whatever. The dealings or whisperings of others, what I don't show. Oh, come back. No, 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 no. You want to stay, right? You'll be, if you want to come, you come. I'm open for it. Um, anybody. But people leave and sometimes have their little whatever. You know, I, I don't know. I don't know. And these people have their own channels. So feel free to go to the channels and vibe with them. And I'm here. But I never really, when I started this out, 2021, I said to myself, 2001, I keep saying 21. No, I've been uh, two years. It's been 22 years. I said, I'm going to be myself. I'm going to stay true to me. I'm going to be nice, but I ain't kissing nobody's ass. I'm not going to get in the click thing, whatever. I'm going to be an individual who I was with other individuals. We've been going forever more as long as we understand that. But again, when it comes time to you know, manipulation and you know, you're somebody behind you, find out this and try to get him to do this and ha, ha you know i see i see all of that see many of you don't see what i see from the position that i'm in it's like if you're speaking up in the auditorium you see everybody's face everybody who's sitting down there who's up there they may look sideways and see a few people but i see the whole auditorium you know what i mean and i got my little moments too. <laughs> you know I, mean? I got i don't get down like that like that but i have my little people who say hey man Someone's plotting this or plotting that, or they don't really wish you the best. And then you got to take that with a grain of salt, too. Just put it on a file. But me, I have to keep going every day with what I do. I can't get caught up. In, oh, just, oh, let me reach out to me and let me talk to you. Five hours here and three. No, I don't do that. It's me in the ring. If the cornerman or the bucket boy or the person who is carrying a towel want to go on, I got a championship to deal with this next day. And many people are not going to feel good for you. That's why I can't show some of the things that I'm doing. They're not going to like it. Oh, it's nice. It's coming along nice. Hmm. Yeah, people do that. 
but 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 don't I deserve? Whether you knew if I worked for many years or suffered and been through different things at almost 60 years old, don't I deserve a little something before I'm up out of here? Black people, some of y'all are off the chain. Look, if I chose not to suffer by pulling myself out of the, uh, out of the system, what's wrong with that? I can let the potential of a lot of things go. I don't need it. I'm good. I'm not in the competition with anybody or trying to show anybody up. The biggest joy that you'll feel in this life is having the ability to let go. Just let go. Because when you transition, what you going to do? You're going to hold on to stuff? That's going to be a painful transition. You try to hold on to stuff and, and you, 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 you're not transitioning, but you're dying. And you cussing out people that you haven't seen from 1957, and here you are, should be enjoying the beauty of a transition, but you holding on and cussing out something that you're leaving, and you're not looking ahead of you. So if you got this kind of spirit inside of you, what kind of place are you going to? Because you're not fit for the good place. I'm trying to get all that forth now. Like when I go up, Mr. Skirv on the property, I go up in that top balcony and I take a reclining chair and I just look off. Look off, I start nodding out. I don't care if I had a full night of sleep, just being at peace and releasing. Do I have to break it down on, on, on more um, <laughs> lewd terms? You sit on the toilet. You needed this food and this nourishment for a while, but you have already been nourished from it. Now you have waste inside of you. You want to walk and hold on to all the waste? No. You look like you're in your third trimester of pregnancy, and the minute you pass gas, you clean out all just in every apartment and house from five miles around you. You don't want that. But when you sit down to let it go, let it go, let it go, and release, there's a pleasant feeling to release what it is that you don't need. You don't need it. You needed what it was before. But the places and situations and people and things that will benefit you for time. And then you have to release and move on. Because if it's not nourishing anymore, it will do you no good except to be toxic. And when you see it become toxic, that's really a sign that you let go. But... Those toxic things can become fertilizer of something that's growing new. And it can come back in a different form. That's the cycle of life, and that's the beauty of life, that really and truly nothing ever gets wasted. It's a beautiful thing when you see it that way. But most of us caught up in the immediate, specific things. Step back and look at the overall picture. And realize that there is no death, just transition. People cause themselves to die because they can't see the next level. They're so, do you drive backwards? I'm pretty good driving backwards. Like if I back up my car and back it up on the street and you hold the wheel a certain way, you wheel straight. I'm pretty good that way. I always like, I'm a good driver anyway. I'm not bragging. Brother, man, got skills. I drive a 40 foot bus like a Toyota Corolla in a second. Shoot, 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 make you just see you, man. Go, go back to Orlando and ask the guy that drove the 21 for all them years. They'll tell you, man, that bold dude, he's online, right? New YouTube, right? Man, he a hell of a job. <laughs> and your reputation will follow you. This is why I deal with certain situations a certain way, you know? Let me see, let me see. Okay, here we go, y'all. And just because you pulled yourself out of the system and let it go does not mean you ran away. yes. Thank you. I got to give it to you. Like, thank you. Thank you. I didn't run away. I just must have out of it. But I, you're right, Sister Yellow. So many people. There are a couple of YouTubers when they realized that I left. See, the visit was old. Was old oh, you visited his mother. But when I came here for good and they realized it, yeah, you can run all you want to, but it ain't doing you no good to run. But then they come around and want to hook up with you again so you can aid their channel. 
the community. You know, like I said, I, I, I'm not driven by these things, right? But one day, especially you, Sister Oyel, we're going to sit down. I'm going to tell you some things I've been through. <laughs> what? Just for the ability to sit down in front of a camera that, it, that don't even cost that much money. A little cam on a computer with a little microphone. This microphone, a cheap microphone. It's the same one they got in the breakfast club. I invested money in this. This cost about $399. I got three of them. I worked. Sometime I had almost the whole, I don't want to use no credit card. Oh, I can't get it for the two weeks. But I, I need to get another one. To have all around. I have some mics, right? What I'm saying is that anybody can get a free YouTube channel and get on and talk what they want, right? Tracy J, that spirit of never giving up. I know I see you back. It's the same situation, but keep on trying, sweetheart. Keep on trying. Um, God, I wish I can help take a jump to the screen, help you out, and come back. But you made it through. Just a mere hitting of something in that program. Just look at the screen and, and, and just hit some other buttons that take you to the places and it may take you where you need to go. Because it's not that hard. But I tell you, when you first do it, you can have brain fart. <laughs> Plus the anticipation of coming on, you know, coming on to the show. I understand. And if I ran, what was I running from? That's what I don't understand. You know, um, here we go. This is so true. The majority of people do not want to let go of this white supremacy system because of the of material benefits it has. And you're so right, raw reality. Because of the material benefits, all the early benefits. I mean, really, it comes with so much stress. I'm not against it. If you want to purchase something, if you worked hard for something and you want it, I'm not against you having it. This is not what I'm all about. It just may not be for me because I've had luxury cars and trucks and I've had all of that stuff. You know, there's, there's really no need for me to walk around with an ego anymore like that. For me, it's the experience of life and the joy of vibing with my sisters and brothers on a truly pure level. I get the most satisfaction out of the hand the connection. Sure, somebody gave me a car. Like, wow, that's a nice car. You gave me this car? And I'm doing, I'm gonna have to get a vehicle. It ain't gonna be some, you know, whatever. Oh, I'm seeing right here. Let me see something here. Okay. And that was sent a while ago. Yeah. But don't know. Stay right there, Jason. Just fiddle around with everything. Um, it's definitely gotta be. Definitely got to be some. Okay, let me get back in the chat room. Yeah, Master Glam. Those that, uh, that understand, understand. Those that don't, don't. If you still want to come on in, I'll drop the link again. Just come on in. There you go. And um, I'm soon going to split out. Not right now. But I'm going to do some shows on the weekend, live shows, like probably at the same time. Because during the weekend, I've been just like, these last week, I haven't been doing anything at all. I want to record or record it's circumstantial why I couldn't, but I still want to make up. I want to make up for that show last night. I want to do that same show over again. And um, I want to do it on the weekend, maybe tomorrow, maybe Sunday evening. But I definitely want to attack that because there's so much more that I had to say. You know what I mean? Um, yes. But that superficial materialistic stuff doesn't do it. It doesn't do us anything. What good does it do us if we don't have each other? What good does it do us if we don't have each other? If you have family that they don't want to talk to you because they have some weird notion in their head about something, clean out your mind and clean the funk out. What good does it all have? You know, and, and then you might be dying and mad that, oh, they might try to get it. Well, you can't stop it. And I see you again on the double tip. And I see Sister Miko here too. Yes, Sister Miko is here. But Tracy, just keep on trying. It is. But remember, brothers and sisters, you can still stand tall. Diamond in the back, sun rooftop, 
Dig in the sea with the incense. Ooh. <laughs> Yeah, I got my dragon's blood. I'm giving going to this dragon's den. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. Can you hear me good? Yeah. Okay. So listening to looking at the title is so profound and prophetic because I was just thinking mm -hmm. these folks keep us in just they, they think of that carry. And we always think we need more. Well, I need this and I need that. No, you don't. You really don't. Right. You need a place to sleep. You need food. You need clothes on your back. Basic necessity. So I'm thinking, okay, since I'm no longer a travel nurse, I'm not making the money I used to make. And right. that's what you were saying, being financially literate. What I know now, had I knew then, I should be sitting very motherfucking pretty. But I'm not. So right. I like working my three days, my 12 hour shifts at night. I mean, mm -hmm. I like it, but I don't like it. But in order for me to get myself out of the hole, I literally woke myself into, I got to work extra hours and I'm like. Right, right. But you're bringing yourself back into balance and you have the power to do so. And you have a set responsibility and that will catapult you up even further. Because it's like the slingshot, you, the rubber band, you have the rock in there, you may go get pulled back a little bit. But when you release in the movement that comes out of that, from what you know, nothing will be stop you. And you're probably going to want to work them other days and put that money aside to go towards something. You see what I mean? Focus. And you're absolutely right. Because I've said, and $20,000 may not be money to nobody, but it's a lot of money when you ain't never had $20,000 in the bank at one time. People, oh, she'll nurse this and that. That mindset is when you not come from nothing and you finally get something, you want to buy everything in goddamn sight. You want to experience, and that's fine at Danny, but have a fucking balance. You got to have a balance because if not, when that money ain't coming in like a motherfucking mighty Russian wind, and now you got to wait every two weeks to make the amount of money you was making every motherfucking week, when every Friday was a payday, now every other Friday is a payday, you learn. And some people don't ever, ever, ever learn. And then just sitting back and knowing where I went wrong and who allowed me to see a motherfucker help you uh, a, a, a motherfucker who ain't got shit to lose will help you lose every motherfucking thing. And then That's leave right. you there to pick up the pieces. What was your boy on all uh -huh. Pick up the pieces. And I'm the <laughs> only one going to work right now. Got to be clocked in by 638, no later than 645 to work and be looking at goddamn vaginas and titties all night. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but how the universe is so good, because, you know, I didn't iron my uniform. But I use them when I'm ironing. I set my intentions. I go out there and get me some spray starch. That Niagara, that spray starch, I set my intentions because I said this before. The particular soaps I use when I take my bath, when I'm scrubbing off. And if you're in the medical field, you might want to take spiritual showers and spiritual baths on it frequently because you're picking up all types of energies. Yes. So, yes. you know, so I'm at work. I'm watching everybody damn crazy. So Tuesday, they needed nurses bad. But nobody called me. Oh, you don't want me to make the motherfucking money. So they call right. management in. See, when you call management and the supervisor that's on salary, you don't pay them outside of what you already paying them. So uh. to pay to call me, now you're getting into overtime. And then if they give you like a little seven hundred dollar bonus, a thousand dollar bonus for coming in. But see, what I got to do is I got to keep this shit. When you don't tell your enemies or your frenemies. What they what they need what uh what what's going on they don't know what to attack and by the time you come out the motherfucking smoke they're like god damn but I just <laughs> yeah. sat and I look and I listen I talked to my daughter we talked the whole time I worked out today but it's good that baby you got it now you got it now don't sit there and swindle your goddamn money you can't buy friends you can't buy love like Nipsey Hussle said it the best. He say, you can't buy money. I mean, you can't buy loyalty, love, or respect because niggas will extort you out your check. 
If that yep, shit ain't yep. given freely, you cannot pay for it. I mean, you can, but you're not going to get the return on your investment that you want. Right. So, right. You know, but I got to go to my, I got, I really got, I said, man, damn. <laughs> my check that I make last Friday, I make that in a week. Well, I was, but I can't, you know, wobble right. over spilled milk. It is what it is. When you're low better, but you got to damn do better. But see, you the thing is, but, but see, the thing is, Sister Miko, just like you in that vehicle right now, you're moving forward. Even if you get into a lane that's a little slower, you're still Which moving forward. Yeah. And like I always say, in a fight, every blow is not a knockout blow. You might throw that jab to blind the opponent's eyes for a second before you drop that right hand in on them. You understand? You're still moving forward. And, and if you're moving a little slower as opposed to before financially, you will, you will make use of it even better so that when things even increase, you'll still have that stickability where you're going to make the maximum use. See, like me now, I make maximum use of my time. I do right. not waste any time. My, my body tells me, listen, Lance, you need to go there and go, go to sleep and do this stuff tomorrow. I do it. Mm -hmm. You see what I mean? You have to listen from within. It can be mm -hmm. tempting to be pulled outside and, and, and don't even think that too much because, you know, you may be making a little less than when you were making more as a traveling nurse, but there's certain advantages to this also where you can think more, things a little more stable. You know yeah, what I mean? I have a stable but, home because I was in the extended right? state for a whole year. I want to be right. home. I want to come back to St. Petersburg, Florida. I want to work at the hospital I'm working at. But you always talk about what you want. But when you get there, like, God damn, I don't crazy up in this. But since the universe, God, done allowed me to go all around the world and bye, yay, yay. Now I know. That's why I just sit back like color purple. I just sit back and see what the walls going to look like. Because the certain shit, I ain't going to put this in. I'm going to M-Y-O-B, mind my own business. Because see, what you ain't finna do, you ain't finna have me in no courtroom talking about, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, so help me God, because I am going to tell the truth. You're not going to send your attorneys and tell me what to say, how to answer a question, no. The doctors and these nurses be in here doing some fuckery. <laughs> and I just renewed my license for the next two years. I'm single, ready to mingle. I don't have nobody help splitting this goddamn 1875 <laughs> and damn <laughs> internet bill and not, not yeah, the internet, the water bill, and the, the light bill, car insurance. Right. Oh, no, I'm doing that all by my goddamn self. And I'm okay with it. So, right. uh -uh. so I sit back. I told the people that this morning at the work, at the job, and they thought I was bullshitting. I said, I feel, I felt more comfortable selling crack cocaine. I said this in a nursing station than being a nurse <laughs> these times of days. They said, what? <laughs> then they thought I was joking because I'm always joking. You know, you, the truth come right, out right. of the joke. I told him, I said, you so yeah. crazy. I said, I sure did. 357 Fifth Street South, just around the corner from the hospital I work at. So <laughs> it was like, girl, you crazy. I said, well, that's why I do what I do. I ain't need here kissing no damn ass because I know them, them tissue, them toilet tissue color people, they'll have your ass outside of a damn job. Mm -mm. They'll tell everything you did. Email, I say y'all be some Ray Charles um keyboard gangsters <laughs> up in here. Y'all don't see shit but tell every damn thing. But they was looking at me like that. So they looked the black tech when we was leaving, we was leaving. She said, Miko, you so I said, Yes, ma'am. And my my clients was the price of women. And look at God, the universe turn thing. You know what I'm saying? When I tell you I have favor at this place. Because I have, mm -hmm. no, let them young nurses do all the damn work. Usually you need me. I don't go to the OR unless my patient go there. I don't go to antepartum. I let somebody else do it. I just sit over there, you know, but I, I do help and do my duties. Mm -hmm. And I make my, my essence and my presence known. And you're going to feel me when I leave. Simple as that. Right. So, right. you know, I've been blessed. I've been blessed. But, honey, I got to get my paper up. God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked for fifty five dollars an hour. The damn man laughed at me on the interview. You ask what I want to get paid, I tell you, <laughs> even management don't you know, get paid that much. 
That's right. What's up, big bro? And I'm so saying, when there's they nothing want me to wrong. do you know your value. You exactly. I mean? I'm bringing I'm, I'm bringing skills. I'm getting, I'm bringing experience to the goddamn job. You know what I'm saying? This this some real deal. You know they brag about I'm a legal nurse consultant. You know I'm a certified legal nurse consultant. So I'm the motherfucker you don't want to see in the courtroom on the OB case when shit That's pop off. Because you know you're you know I got my first case from somebody off your show helping their family members out. We just waiting on the outcome. Wow. You know what I'm saying? They be they be on that that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. Nope, not on my watch. I don't give a damn what color I he is. I told my patient <laughs> the other day, look, you want your baby on the short bus or the long bus? This ain't about you. <laughs> Cause I don't want to see you in George Judy and talking about. I didn't tell you the facts. See, well, the doctors never told me like, because they want to tell you medical term. I'm going to get down to your level. I see your eyelashes. I see your tattoo. So I see your little thug life, baby. So, you know, I'm a little rough around the edges. So I told her, I said, baby, let me tell you something. Your baby already deselling. You don't want the epidural. And I understand, you know, y'all Hispanics and a lot of people, you you're not, but honey, the tables have changed. If we got to take okay. you to that back and, and breathe for you, you a little chunky now. We got to right. make sure we intubate the right damn hole. You don't want a bronchial intubation. You want us <laughs> to do the right thing. So I got if, if you get an epidural, we can go there. We can move fast, but we ain't got to be trying to put, you know, mm -hmm. you to sleep because mm -hmm. we got to move fast. Now, because if the anesthesia get to the baby, we don't put him to sleep. Long story short, after I had them told her to get down. She went and got that uh, epidural. A couple hours later, she delivered a baby boy. He went on up the NICU. She delivered, went to postpartum and then ended up going upstairs to see her family. And her mom yeah. thanked me because I was real. Baby, I ain't finna sit up here and play play with you. Because the first thing you're going to say is, well, they ain't never told me nothing. You was a damn lie. You was a <laughs> lie. And the truth ain't in you. Let, now, let, what let me say accident this? Uh-oh. Let, let me say this. Tracy, this, oh, have Tracy. in the back of me, Tracy, oh. Tracy J, let me hear you. Well, that's what, okay, so. The line is connected. Hold on. Ain't this a mess? You know what? I'm going to try. Stay on the line, Tracy. Stay on the line. Let me, yeah, um. Stay on the line, because Sister Miko almost at work. That was holding <laughs> us up, that, that accident. You know what I'm saying? Stay Just on, like okay. you were saying, although I'm moving slow. Well, hell, I didn't know it was an accident up ahead. Now that I'm past it, now I'm going to speed right. limit, but a little bit faster. So one Did thing I that? hate is getting late to work. I don't, mm -mm, no, if you call me in the office, don't call me about some bullshit. Now call me about something I did. That's right. Yeah. Okay, let me connect up. Let me get Tracy in. Okay, let's see if it's working now. Sister Tracy, let me hear your voice. Sister Tracy, are you still with us? I don't hear nothing. I have my phone. Yeah, I don't you got know. It on mute? Maybe she hung up. Yeah, I think she might have hung up. I got it connected oh. now, Tracy. Hey, hold on, hold on. Okay, let me, let me hear you now, Tracy. This is weird. I can't hear you, but you're chopped up. Okay, she said she can hear me, but I'm chopped up. Um, but I can hear her, cle her, her clearly. Oh, you heard her. Okay, this is what I'm going to yeah. do. Um, I, I might mute myself for the phone, Tracy, but I had myself on the show. I got my headphones on. Keep, let, let's, Miko, let, let, me, let me hear her on the show and let, let's see in the chat room if they can hear her. Talk to us, Tracy. You still sound chopped, but I don't miss so much of the show <laughs> trying to get connected with Stream Yard. I know, so, I know. I don't know. No, but it's it's nothing. There's no uh, voodoo going on. We're going to figure it out. But we'll figure it out probably off the show. So when you come on, and have you just come on. But I hear you in my headphones and you're in my system. But but I'm coming off chopping of to you. This should be. It's not like the other night we had that experience uh, last night. That was terrible. 
but um that was awesome. Yeah. I want to listen to that thing. Yeah. I kept speeding forward. I'm like the whole damn show fucked up. Y'all sound like I robots, but I can hear you clearly and I can hear her clearly. Yeah, yeah, that was strange. That was strange. Yeah, Tracy, I have you in, but let me see if I figure out the phone. Bluetooth ain't working. I got you hooked up in the Bluetooth. Give me a count of five, Tracy. Cause I sound, I know I sound jacked up to her. And I'm not one to give up, but we're gonna have to we're gonna have to really go in on this. Um, I have a connection to the Bluetooth, not directly. I have it through to the wire and through the Bluetooth. Um, there's no other way. How can I do it here? Um, I'm well, I'm almost at work, so I'm getting ready. I'm yeah. gonna get up, get ready to jump off. It's Friday right, right. tonight. You, you, you look but, fabulous, though. You know, it's clear. Everything's so clear. You look fabulous. You look fabulous. You look clear. You got a good phone over there. Who? Oh. You? What kind of phone oh. is that? Oh, you. that's that dog on Best Buy Android with Metro PCS service. Oh, oh well, hey. hey. They got better. They got better. They got better than when oh, they were yeah. 10 years ago. Because, you yeah, know, I used to call them here. used to call them ghetto PCS. <laughs> Man, look at him. Shoot. And then I dial up that. Brrr, oh, my God. I guess we can say we thank Nef God for some change. But, yeah. We, we got we got some agents working under here, Nephi. So, I don't even know. I would never take your comment off. But there's always some hocus pocus going on in this thing. I still hear you, um, uh, Tracy, shuffling around. I just don't know what in the heck is going on. Mm. Damn sure ain't the rent. I don't hear now if she even talking. I know. The I, thing is, it's so choppy. I can't even understand. So. And I hear you perfectly, Tracy. I, I hear, hear you perfectly, my, too. Yeah, I, I hear. I hear, Okay, so don't listen to me, Tracy. Come on in and say what you got to say. Now, in the chat room, let us know if you hear Tracy loud and clear or compromise, because see, if if, I, if I'm not hearing you that good, and you're there, hey, talk, and I'll be quiet. Go ahead, Tracy, talk, so we can tell. Hello. Yeah, go, go ahead and talk. So they can hear me in the chat room. Yeah, yeah, they can hear you. Yeah, they hear they hear you. So don't worry about okay, me. I can't. Don't. I, I'm gonna be quiet. You talk to them about the topic. I just, uh, okay. Um, what made me think of this topic today is I was um, having a discussion with a family member and um, they were discussing, they, they were telling, pretty much telling me that they wanted a vehicle. And this is a much younger family member and um, they wanted a brand new vehicle. And I was telling them, well, this is your first vehicle. This is your first vehicle. You might want to start out with something new, something small, maybe something with no payment. And they were just telling me how um, they have friends that have new vehicles and they want, they see themselves in the SUV. They see themselves in this, in this latest model. And it's kind of told them, I'm like, this is your first vehicle. So, why not start small and not burden yourself with a car and buy insurance and just kind of start saving and building up your reserves and your, you know, when you're young. And so this person refuses to listen to want what they see everybody else having. So it kind of like put the thought in my mind of, how far removed they are from when, from how I was when I was their age. Um, like I said in the chat earlier, my first vehicle was like a 95 Dodge Neon. And I got that, this was back in the 90s, so again, I'm telling my age. And that vehicle, I paid, that, I paid for that vehicle when I got it. And I had no payments on it. 
or anything. My insurance was low. I, did, I didn't hardly have any maintenance. But it was an old car, and believe it or not, it was a car. It didn't have power, you know, windows, so I had to roll the windows up and down. But I was grateful that I didn't have to walk for I was grateful that I didn't have to ask for a ride, and I was also grateful that I didn't have to worry about public transportation. And I just did not understand how some young people these days, they don't appreciate, they just don't appreciate having things that are simple. They don't appreciate That's right. not having just a bunch of money on something. I mean, half the time when you see somebody spend money on an item, they want to turn around and tell you how much they spent on that item. You're right. Like, have you ever been in a situation where someone bought something that looked crazy or maybe it was like odd looking or it was ugly or whatnot? They bought it just because of somebody said it was valuable and they paid a lot of money for it. And then right. you tell them about it and say, oh, it don't matter. I paid $1,000 for that. Yeah. Or I paid $2,000 for that. <laughs> that tells you what so that's what is that. made me kind of think of this like why are we throwing our money at ridiculous things exactly like what makes us do that and why are we programmed to do that and, and we have to take it to the limit it seems like we have to like if we have 10,000 we have to spend 999 you know we have to go right to the Point limit why, why? Of- <laughs> exactly exactly because we're so <laughs> broken I think I'm speaking from experience myself. I ain't talking about nobody else. Because we're so broken and damaged, we get our high off of material tangible because we come, not per se, but we come from nothing. So the first thing, you want to look good, you want everybody to know you got your Gucci shoes on, whether they fake or not. You know what I'm saying? So my thing is, are you paying for this SUV? See, you banking on my motherfucking money. I'm going to work. So you better get this Honda Civic that's paid for with AC and going about your damn business. If not, Tom and Jerry will carry you all the way. That's simple as that. But see, you want to give your kids stuff you ain't never had. Fuck that shit. Fuck that. You my friend. Mm-mm. Because I'm the only one going to work right now. Mm-hmm. My daughter, she working at Bonefish as we speak. But hell, I got to pay that 234 car insurance. If she don't pay that car note, I dropped $5,000 on that car note. She don't have to pay that car note till February 2024. Now, you need to start putting money to the side and paying the, the principal. But my name on the motherfucker. <laughs> Shoot, I That's did right. that. Shoot, we better teach these damn. If you want an SUV, then you go get you one. You, you go sign for it. I ain't co-signing for shit. <laughs> Hell no, then when I ask you to clean up a room, your mouth hang longer than the goddamn cat's damn tongue. No, sir. Mm-mm. No. Her SUV, because everybody else, everybody else doing a swan dive off the damn sky where you gonna swan dive with their ass. Shit. These kids. They fucked up in the head because half of the parents fucked up in the head. So fucked up plus fucked up equals fucked up. You can't yeah. be fucked up when if I was, you want to be with me. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my French. <laughs> <laughs> but when when I was that age, I was just happy to have a vehicle and not having to walk anymore. I didn't care about. I mean, it wasn't the best looking vehicle, but at the same time, I'm like, I don't have to walk. You know, I don't have to do the do my head to do what I didn't have a car, and so I'm trying to get them to see that. <laughs> but, the thing but, is, I guess we didn't have been, social media like that coming up. We didn't have all these false. Everybody got it going on and everybody happy, happy. We ain't had a lot of that. Now that's what they have. They want to live this social media. Like I'm going to get on the elevator so my phone may cut off. So they're trying to be something they not. But you can be that shit with your own damn money. Not with mine. That's right. That's right. Yeah. 
But it seems like we enjoy pushing the limit. It's still, it's, it's still a little chocolate, but I can understand a little bit better. A little bit better. Wait a minute, wait, the speaker sounds. Let me see something for a second. Hold on. Let me see something. Is it chopping up now? Is it chopping yeah, up? Yeah, it's now? still chopping. I don't know. I don't know if it's like, I'm just on my speaker phone, on my cell phone. Oh, that, you know what? That might be the reason. Yeah, because because speaker phone. What do I need to do? Just come off of the speaker phone. Because the speaker phone is just do I need one to take you or off the speakerphone. Yeah, come off the speaker phone. Yeah, I'm off the speakerphone now. Okay, I think you'll hear me a lot better because see with the speakerphone, it's either one or the other. One person's talking. Like if I'm talking and you try to talk, I can't hear you and it's going to be choppy. But when it's on a regular phone, both can hear each other at the same time. So I think that might be it. How do I sound now? I'm a bit more clear now. I'm not on speakerphone either. I just. Well, that works, so I'm going to get off. Okay, Miko, have a good night. We're going to do it again soon, and I'm glad for the surprise of you tonight. It's right. fine self. Smiling just <laughs> fine. Look at him. Fine, fine, fine. That's right. Bye. <laughs> All right, bye-bye, All right. sweetheart. Bye, Miko. All right. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're here with me. That was a treat for Miko, and um, you can hear me a little better. I'll come a little closer. A little closer, a little closer, a little closer. Move the mic up a little closer. You know, see every pimple on my face. Okay, every... you sound a little bit better. It, it's not. A, it's still choppy, but it's not as choppy. Yeah, I'll talk a little slower, a little more pronounced, so you can hear me. <laughs> so I have to give you credit for, you know, <laughs> you came up with the idea of the show. Seriously, it's on my phone right there, and um, I rolled with it. Well, I was just thinking as I was talking. Yes, I was just thinking as I was talking to my family member. I said, well, wh where does this come from? And then I thought about it. I'm like, when we're in grade school and even when we go to college, we're not taught to be, you know, um, business owner or anything. We're not taught to create. We're taught to be consumers and right. we're taught to be employees. Right. So exactly. they're not teaching us the other you know, aspect of money. Some of us don't learn about money until we're in our 30s. Hmm. 30s? Shoot. And that's and and yes, and that's and that's after that's after we filed bankruptcy and had some cars repoed. <laughs> yep, so, yep, and still I mean, didn't learn. <laughs> and we took that as being normalcy. We thought that was normal. Yes, you see, what I mean, some yes. of us don't know until the time we're about to transition off this earth and realize we have to have a will and how to divvy stuff out, and they start understanding, and they're on their way out of here. Isn't that sad? Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. That's I was talking to a family, another family member today. We were talking about paying bills. And so me, my dad was a great father. Rest his soul. Well, he was a great father in certain things. Rest his soul. Mm -hmm. But he was really good with money. And one of the things I was telling the family member is when, I, when my mom's come in, I paid them right then because I have the money then. I was taught to pay bills when they came in the mail. Some people don't pay their bills until they're actually due. I don't do that. Mm -mm. I go ahead and pay the bill. Mm -mm. I go ahead, like, 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 for instance, my light bill is due at the end of every month. I pay my light bill at the beginning of the month with, along with my rent and everything because I have the money then. Right. Because my, my mindset is I don't know what's going to happen between now and the end of the month. That's right. That's because right. If something happens, I've already paid my light bill. I don't have to worry about, oh, I just pay my light bill, but I don't know. I pay my bills as soon as they come in the house. That's right. You got to be a bill and predator. And that's how I've been taught, but you gotta look family, for it. I've had to argue with you like, yes. Yes. I have people argue with me saying, why would you pay them now? Hold on to that money because you make it. I'm not making interest. It, first of all, it's in my checking account. Your checking account does not draw interest. That's spending money. That's money you're going to spend. Right. So it's not doing me any good holding on to the money for five more days when I know I have to pay this money out anyway. Mm -hmm. But it kind of made me think about us as a people and how we handle money, what we know about money. And it's 
so far, it's very, very little because they want to tell us that we got a strong buying power, but we don't have a strong wealth right. power. It's misdirected. We don't have we don't we don't have enough black people. Like people want to say, look at celebrities. We don't have enough of them that's willing to help us. That's right. Or that'll help us at all. It's it's like we're led to slaughter. We don't even have a chance, but yet we can get this money, but we can't hold on to it and do anything to make. We can't. We can, but it's like we can't make it work for us and do right and use it for leverage. We we get a lump sum money, and we want to do all the stupid stuff, walking up and down the boulevard, little trinkets, little things, little small things, until we're exhausted. You have that financial might. What could you do to maximize it at that particular time to set yourself up? That's what I want to think about. You know what I mean? I remember when right, right. I received a substantial amount of money way back in the early 90s. I used it to fix up my house and rent out other places in the house so I can have that income coming in, which would, you know, far surpass you know, until people didn't stop. Mm -hmm. they didn't want to pay their rent. <laughs> you know, yeah, I got. We're gonna talk about soon. We're gonna talk about rent stories. When you're renting the people, or when you you know renting to people and from people, the things that landlords do, the things that renters do, the crazy stuff I've been through that way. Oh my God, it's always something in every yeah. life that we can learn from. And that's why I love these exchanges, and I love the fact that you you, know, you hit me up. We, you hit me up early. I'm like, yeah, let's do it. And here we are. You know, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I um, let me see. Did I write? I I think I wrote something down too. Let me see. Mm -hmm. But I didn't forget any talking point. Right. I I saw in the comments that people comment on what, you know, what they thought about the black community when it comes to money. Mm -hmm. And one comment said, I don't know who said it. This one comment was like, um, we uh, made a mistake. We lost financially when we decided to integrate. And I thought that comment was interesting. I did agree with it, mm -hmm. but I want to add a little piece to that. We should have, we needed to integrate socially. We could integrate socially, but not financially. <laughs> That's slick. That's good. We can integrate socially, but not financially. Mm -hmm. We should have stayed segregated financially. Yeah. Wow. Because isn't that what other groups do? Other yes. groups, That's like right. integrated social, like they'll be around you at work, at church, out in public, grocery store, wherever. They'll integrate them, but when it comes to their finances, that's segregated. That's They're right. gonna stay with themselves. That's right. On point. They treat you like you like you have leprosy. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know. Yeah. And they 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 keep that separate. And what they know about money, they're not trying to teach you. They're not trying to help. Oh you. no, no, they'll they'll never teach us. What they'll do is they, they will never teach us. Yeah, but what they, what they'll do is say. I'll give you a job, but I'm not going to teach you how to handle that money. <laughs> They'll give you jobs all day long. You, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. But they ain't teaching you the same thing they do with money. It's a right. big secret then. Don't, don't teach the Negroes that. You see? Right. Because they don't want you and to take that they like to off. tell you that. Yeah. Yeah. What's the thing? Pull yourself up by the bootstraps. Right. If you work hard. Yeah. There's more to it, though. There's more to it. Yeah. Especially in this system. You know, this system is more to it. And um, right. they don't want right. to see you operate in that manner. They don't want that word to get out of how to handle money and deal with money. They don't want that to get out. They don't mind you being or showing your uh, Negro side, you drive the big cars and you handle this stuff, and they're so glad that you take the money they give them, that they gave you, if you're a celebrity or an athlete, for example, and there's other areas that they can do this in, 
and you take all that money and go down to the dealership to the Italian man, the white man, the European man, whoever it may be, and spend all that money, and now you made it with this big car that now is diminishing in its value. You know what I mean? But when you wise with yeah. money, they yeah. demonize you, and they will go after you. And character assassinate you and have you locked up. That's right. If you too smart, I to get rid of you. Um, also want to say there's a, a YouTuber, if you haven't heard, out here in Ghana. Um, he doesn't live too far from here, but he's the premier YouTuber in Africa, right? And his name is Wudamaya. I haven't had a chance to meet him. I just missed him here and there, different functions and stuff. It'll happen. But he started to, he was supposed to interview the president of Ghana in Germany because the president of Ghana was going to be in Germany and what am I was going to be there to interview him. There's another uh, gentleman who he uh, interviewed within the last week who actually ran for president. And he's a guy who, what am I now? He's a guy who is showing Africa to the world in a good light. But he speaks about things with brutal honesty, but not as brutal maybe as I would do. But he's coming along and he's coming into consciousness, even more so with what he, do, with what he does. Now, at last count, he had 1.2 million subscribers. Now, that's no easy wow. task. And there are YouTubers who get to those numbers because they're compromised with certain governments, okay? I won't say any names, but he seemed to be one who got it organically. And those who are in the motherland have a different attitude toward certain YouTubers that are here. So they'll follow through. He even met with the, the woman who ran YouTube. She just recently stepped down. And of course, interviewing the president, interviewing affluent people, business owners all the way through. It may have been a bit too much for somebody. So I don't know whether it's today or yesterday. He went to his account. People were going to his YouTube account. Poof, nothing. Everything deleted. Everything gone. What? 1.2 million subscribers. All the videos are gone. I don't know how this works. It's strange to me. They found that it was a some white man from America who live stream off the channel, took control of it, but I'm not sure if he was the one who did hacking. So if you, I don't want to say facts that are not true, but what I do know, his account has been hacked into. There's a lot of speculation on Twitter, and they're basically saying, did he get too big with his narrative that Africa is this great place? And whatever you see flawed here, we can work on and make better. With the influence that he has, is there something there? Uh -uh, that's too much power for you to have that we can't control. We knocking this off because hopefully there's a glitch or something. The things can be brought back. But I know that once content is taken off, it ain't back. So what was this all about? And if need be, mm -hmm. we need to ring the bells and speak the word and try to get the subscribers back as I know it will be that way, but what's to stop it from happening again? This is to let people know that no matter how powerful we seem to get on other people's platforms, we'll always come and let you know somehow, some way. How did that happen? How did that happen? You know, him, and it has happened. And they try me. Oh, they try me. But I'm a little guy compared as far as numbers are concerned. But I'm quite, a, I'm quite aware that he knows I've heard that he mentioned my name. And one day we'll meet, but he's a very busy guy, you know. And I just wish, I hope he's not yeah. discouraged. And um, he'll be back. His name is so well known. And um, he's got to do things a little different. But he worked so hard to build that platform. Say it again? I said he probably worked so hard to build that platform. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, it is hard work. I mean, uh, how, how many, how many years? One point two. I mean, how many years was one point two million subscribers? Yeah, it. It don't think. I'm not saying he was there since YouTube started, but he's been around a while. 
but it was just an upward trajectory and he knew how to run it right. through, you know and and like i said sometimes you can get too influential where your word alone can command some, some amount of power and many many in certain positions don't want that this couldn't be a fluke to me it just couldn't be something that was just um a fluke you know and that's to let you know that those of us who do this, no matter what your category, there needs to be more unity. But the, we don't own this. So we need to go somewhere where we can right. ha- have a little more power with the money that we make. I mean, I don't right. make much. I, I can, I can, I can. Put, one day, maybe this weekend, I'm going to flush it on the screen. People going to be like, what? That's what you make? I'm going to show you on the app what I make. But for me, it's not about Money, 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 money. You know what I mean? It helps. Yeah. Um, yeah. But what comes in through a cash app or a PayPal, that is more effective to me because they can pull the string anytime. You see what I mean? And even then, if that was knocked off of YouTube, yeah. you know, so, you know, we got to go and do alternatives. Now, with my other platform that I was paying for earlier in the year, I mean, last year, twice, I had Pretend Genie on. Right. And I kept it off of YouTube because I did it on YouTube April 2nd last year. They gave me a two week ban because of that, because of the controversial and hateful, divisive. And we, didn't, we were having a good old time, but he is kind of banned from social media. Right. I'm not scared, scared to deal with him. I'm going to bring him on somehow, some way. So I had this other platform. I'm going to fix him and I'm going to mention the name. Right. That I was paying for a premium. I could put as much up, and it's going to be my backup to save my video content. Once they saw mm-hmm. that I had the irritated genie on, that particular platform gave, sus- suspended my account. Yep. And this is something I'm paying for. And they got nudity on that thing. I mean, oh, my goodness. Out. They got all kind of stuff there, right? So, um, oh, you could back up your content, Sharon. Yes, definitely. You put it on. A hard drive. I'm gonna do it over again and catch the things that I may have missed. But you have to do that, you know, um, because that's how they're coming after yeah. people, you know. But a good name is something yeah. that they can't destroy. You see what I mean? Plus, I'm not just a YouTuber. I'm an artist. I have the website landscurve.com, which a lot of my videos are on. Also, YouTube pulls a plug. They go. But my name, you're gonna take yeah. name from me, you know. So I gotta be go back into the other categories that I'm known for and 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 rock that too, you know, in anticipation. Because there's going to be time when they come back around for me too, you know. But, yeah, um, those yeah. who Kanye West spoke about, they influenced them to uh, get in my account, even though I paid for it. And the next morning, they messed around with my website. So let me know, Negro, we too powerful. But they couldn't get in it. But they went and reached their hand in the website and um, took away some videos and put some sailing videos in there. I'm like, what the hell is this? And I could not erase it. I tried the best. And you, you could so it's, it's your, you could have left your own. My own website. Like, it, like that's your own house. Like, anything else is like rented right, space. Right, you like, can't get something out. Yeah, YouTube is like rented space that they give you, but they benefit from the ads. And if you have a premium account still, they benefit from the ads that are on there. The other one, the other platform, they, um, they're based in Manhattan. I pay for it. And, and just on that alone, they got rid of me. Somebody get, made the call and they tried to shut down my website. That's the one I was more concerned about. But I have a buddy of mine who lives in Dubai who he does my heavy lifting. He goes into the, you know, I could change the oil and the transmission fluid. I can, I can do this. I can put some tin on the windows, but this is the guy who can rebuild the engine. And he told me, nobody's going to mess with your website. He said, what they did was comparable to, say you have a home and you have a big wall, you have electric wire around it. They're not getting in, but they can go way back and take a rock and throw it over the wall and break your window. They can only steer you that way, but they're not going to mess with your website. He said, your website is airtight, but your YouTube content, if YouTube takes it down, You've embedded yourself into the site that will disappear too. And that's what happened with the other uh, platform that I had all my videos on. 
that would go up automatic. And I would take work and tell you, y'all, I took after each show, I'd have to create a page and embed that other company's um, version of my YouTube video into it and tag it and code it and do it. It was where I, I would never go to bed until daybreak after a show. It, it, it would never work out that way. There's a lot of work that when you make putting it on the, on the, um, on the podcasting platforms, uh, Spotify, uh, SoundCloud, um, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Anchor, this. That. Sometimes here, you this microphone here, something sitting here, like boom, hit my head on it, boom. <laughs> I just never see the move the mic. But it's a lot of work and don't like it when you have that stick of tuitiveness and you speak in an independent manner. So I'm not... Not sense myself. I just know how to tiptoe through the tulips until once again have other ways. And I, there's other free platforms you can go on, but it's really like you have this one called Rumble. It's a waste of time. It's a big waste of time. You have um, a lot of politicians and a lot of newscasters who are there who can speak a little freer, but it doesn't have audience like we have on YouTube. And really, it, you get on and you're going nowhere. I have stuff that let me go there, but that's not anything to really trust me. I know, and um, I'm good where I am now, and I know I'm safe to a point because I know how to say things without saying things. I can tell a dirty joke in church on a Sunday morning, and everybody will laugh and then say nothing bad. It's, it's to say it. <laughs> so I have to utilize those skills even more, yeah. you know. Uh, and it may not be right, Master. Yeah. Right? It could you, be regular. You, you get choppy again. <laughs> yeah, I'm getting choppy again. It could be. You get really, um, really choppy again. Yeah, I'm getting choppy. Yeah, but we'll go ahead and talk. I mean, there's yeah. more stuff you want to say on the subject. <laughs> go ahead and talk. Go ahead. You just speak your mind. You know, I I could I could um actually step down and let somebody else come up if you want. But with, I think I don't know. I have to figure out what's going on with this phone because I definitely can't. Join you via stream yard, so. Right, right, right. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to figure it out. Trust me. Midnight Green, welcome, welcome. <laughs> and let me, yeah. Jealousy okay. is alive and well. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay, thank you for having me, though. Thank you, oh, and I'll well, continue well, to watch, well, but well, thank you for having me. Thank you for being the one to create this topic, because without you, I may have mind would have thought about something else or whatever, and um, I'm going to wrap it down soon. So and I'll talk to you probably tomorrow at some point. Okay. And um, we'll, we'll chop it up. And I want to make sure okay. you can come on. And uh, thank you for coming on. I mean, I appreciate it. I love the collective feel. You're welcome. It's my much. first time ever coming on anybody's platform. Wow. So thank you. <laughs> wow. So you deserve. It's my first a... time ever coming on a platform. Yes, yes. It's easy. It's no problem. If, if I, am, me, I, I, I was I was quite nervous. I was quite nervous because I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to sound. I probably won't rewatch this one because I know my voice on it. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it, it's it, it's like taking baby steps. When you listen to, it, trust me, in a couple of days you're going to be like, Lance, I got another topic and I'm definitely coming on. We're going to figure <laughs> out that phone. Yes, that's right. Okay. All right. Thank in you. In the meantime, so I'll be working Jason on J. this phone. Okay. All right. You're welcome. Much okay, love. good. Bye bye. All right, peace. If you see the amount of lights that are on me right now, <laughs> you understand why I'm sweating like a like somebody hemmed up somewhere. <laughs> yeah, that was a great exchange. I'm gonna wrap it down soon, but um dang, I'm sweating. Look at that. I'm sweating like a heroin addict, man. I need my stuff, please, man. I need my stuff. I need, I need, I'm sweating like crazy. No. Nah. More love to those guys out there who are addicted. Hopefully they come to their addictions and stuff. There's nothing to make fun of, whatever, which I wasn't making fun of it. Yeah. Um, what she did, I want you all to do. Um, you see the number down there. You can hit me with any topic or anything that happens in the news that I might, you know, miss from sleeping or being distracted. I'm a news reporter. But if it's something worthwhile to speak about, we will speak about it. And we will take time and go in with my favorite term called surgical precision. We'll make it like that. And um, like I said, it's been a beautiful discussion. I'm going to sign off right now. I promise I'm going to come on live tomorrow because for the last two weekends, I haven't done anything live. And I will have content. Um, we had other things we had to do that kind of took us off. And on the weekends, it was just stuff that threw us off completely. But 
We will have some walk-in talks. Yes, we will. Mrs. Skirv is home for the weekend. Like she's always running up on the property. She's always home at night, but she'll be with me. And so we're going to take our walks and I got the cameras ready. Matter of fact, I got it right here. It's kind of stripped down because the batteries are not on it and nothing's going, but boom, this is my little walk and talk camera right here. 4K, y'all in the house. I got another one, but it doesn't make any sense for us to carry two cameras. Um, but we're going to have a good time this weekend. We're going to bring you some experiences and just some cool out kind of stuff looking around. So I want to go to like a really populated area, more so to the mountain or just back behind the properties here. I want to show you some action where you got to really slow it down. And um, I wanted to do that today, but I woke up too late. Like I said, I woke up early this morning with the intention of doing that by myself. Um, but I had to pay the cable. Am I still in America? What? I had to pay. I had to top off the internet cable. Listen. You know something? The other day I had to fill out a, a paper and put my phone number. What's the problem? I had to put my phone number. Why did I put the phone number I grew up on from when my folks moved into the house in September of 68 in Queens, New York? And I wrote it down. 718-659-7839. I was like, I got to erase this off. So my brain is like, Throwing back decades, six five nine seven eight three nine. I'll never forget that phone number. Then the other number we had three two two nine eight one five. That was a dirt phone number back in the day. It's crazy how the brain farts up stuff that it's, it's like mental corn. <laughs> you ate the corn and forgot about it. You're like, oh man, I forgot to flush. It's still there. It's crazy. Yes, CJ. I, I was really yeah. She's back in the chat. Yeah, no, you came through You came through loud and clear, and I think I came through loud and clear to the chat and to those who are listening, but I think we couldn't communicate super clear. And you know what? You know, let me check one thing. Since we went through that, okay, let me check this audio. Okay, let me change one thing. Don't need to change it, but if something changes now, let me know. Um, Queen Midas, welcome, welcome. I know you listen. I see you there, you know. But there's so much to talk about in the world. There was one thing I wanted to um, I wanted to play. I doubt if I can get it here now, quick enough. But just bear with me. It was something that I saw on Twitter that I said I wanted to share. With everybody, let me see if I can pull it up. Okay, let's see if I can pull it up. Bear with me, family, because basically I should have had this set up already. Oh, okay, I'm live, uh, but uh, it's gonna you're gonna hear a double um delayed, what you call it, unless I cut this off. Okay, let me let me speed that up. Let's knock that down. Let's freeze that up. I know you heard a double thing. Okay, let me see something. The people who follow me. If I can't get this to this fast enough, I'll um. Oh man. Well, basically, it was a videotape that I think it was um. Okay, am I getting on the side? No, I'm not going to get it there. Oh, this was good. I'm gonna play it tomorrow when um. We have it on the show. We'll play it tomorrow. Let me knock this Bluetooth off so I can see everything else. Let me pull this down. Pull that down. No, I'm not going to get it. Oh, man. It was basically, it's had to be back in the 30s or 40s, maybe the 50s, maybe. And it was black people from the north in America. I don't know whether it was New York City, Detroit. Uh, Chicago, Philadelphia. I'm not sure where it was, but it was in the north. And we were having a discussion that and I'm trying to, it couldn't be the mouse running out of juice. They were, um, yeah, Tracy was excellent. Yes, he did good. It was the first time. It was the first time. I can't thank you enough. You broke the barrier. You came through. Right? Things will be the same again. So now when I summon you, as long as the phone is working and you're not on the plantation, 
You got to come on in just like everybody else, right? But these black people were affluent. They made lots of money. Um, it wasn't just because they were in the North and fled the South where things were better. They were rocking it, okay? The way they explained it, these were black people who were, were, were higher level money-wise. And they had a meeting where they were complaining about the potential for those type of blacks, those type of blacks who are migrating to the North for a better life, that they just might mess everything up for us. Isn't that something? Where we need our numbers together and unified. So just because you have a little bit more of the piece of the so-called pie, does that make you better? And how dare you say this about your own black brothers and sisters? Are they coming up to be criminals? Were they coming up to steal from you? Well, if you thought in a level of a black community and you had stores and you had uh, hospitals and you had schools, there would be more of us to populate us in our endeavors. But these were these aristocratic black folks that if they had the chance, they would, you know, get into the various secret groups. And that's the precursor to it, that kind of mindset, that I'm going to get more, I need to protect mine, and all these other Negroes out here, they need to stay where they are, or if they come around us, they're not going to be part of us. We're going to keep them out from anything good that we discover. We're not going to teach them anything. We're not going to embrace them. What does that sound like in the modern day? You know what it sounds like. These elitist black groups that they'll be sitting right next to you in a in a church house on a Sunday or a Saturday. And they don't want you there. They despise you because any gain that you have is something that you possibly took from them, even when it's just from their hard work. And they resent you because you're poor. So it's not just racism in America that we have to deal with. And of course, it's worldwide. We have to deal with some of our own who are in position, who, if they're a top lawyer, oh, defend a case. They'll, they'll take your case because there's a potential for them to make money. But are they really down with you? This is the thing we don't understand from what I see. These people, and I'm not going to say just politicians. It could be business owners. It could be anything. It could be entertainers. You buy the records. You buy the songs. Good. But I don't want you around me other than that. And these are the people that those who are the oppressors, white supremacists, they use them. They use them as a dookie stick because, you see, those white folks in, in the system that are defending the system, they don't really bother with them either. But they will deal with them exclusively so, so those who look like us can go out and do the dirty work. And you know the dookie stick, y'all. If you don't know about the dookie stick, let me tell you about the dookie stick. You have outside playing in the street. I mean, urban style. I mean, I grew up in Queens, New York, Manhattan and Queens, New York. So, you know, Queens was nice and kind of country-ish back in the day. We had rabbits, we had snakes, we had fireflies, you know, but it, the trees were torn down and it got to be more city-like. Back in the day when you were out on the street and you wanted to play a little softball, and of course, when it's the car coming, you got to go back up from the cars, the cars go by. Other than that, you all might have took a dump right by the curb, right by where third base is going to be, right? So you had to go in somebody's yard and break off a stick and take that stick. And that was called the dookie stick because the dookie stick was a stick to use to push the doo away. And it really wasn't like hard to do. It was sitting out in the sun, just one big stink-looking brown hockey puck. Push, push it away, push it away, push it way down the block, and into the gutter. Now you don't have to worry about the dookie no more. But now you got some dookie on the dookie stick. So the dookie stick, after you use it for the purpose that you wanted it for, you take the dookie stick and you throw it far away where nobody can find it again. So these elitist black people, they don't realize it, but they're a dookie stick. They're being used by white supremacy to do the dirty work on the poorer people who are downtrodden to keep them over there. And they feel good doing this because they have deals with Massa. And they're working along with Massa. 
And master treats them nice, but he's not really treating them nice because he likes them. Brother, you the dookie stick. Let's just say it raw. You moving the shit people a way that we don't want to be bothered with, and we don't really want to be bothered with you. But we'll hold on to you for a time and for purpose until we get the doodle away. But once the doodle is away, oh, we're throwing you away too. But you never knew that was coming because you thought you was up with us. See? So when you have this type of elitist black folks that really feel that they're a step above you, don't get insulted because they have a rude awakening. But be careful of your dreams. Be careful of your aspirations. Be careful of what you're working hard for because you might get one of these elitist dookie stick blacks around you with the secret handshakes. And they can make sure, because they don't have to go to Massa to get permission. This is a perpetual mission of them. We know the names of the group, their lodges. We, we understand. In my circle, I had a few around me. I knew it. I'm like, mm -hmm. what you're doing and trying to do to me doesn't surprise me because this is your job and this is what you do. Hi, I know you're looking. <clears throat> I'm still here. Can't stop me. Right? Gotta be sneaky and get close to me and send somebody else. I've had so much to deal with in my life. I'm not going to say it here, not because I'm scared, but I'm putting it in the book one day. I'll name names. You'll be surprised. Like, oh, my God. And I ain't going to lie about any one bit of it. Because this stuff that we talk about is real. And they say, oh, black people. Put yeah, we got the crabs in the barrel who are in the same financial status. Oh, okay, let me see something. I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up. I didn't even um. I'm breaking up. Am I still breaking up? Let me know. Oh, I know what it is. Hold on, y'all. Time to change the wires. Some of the things you don't even expect. Yeah. Let me know. Let me know if I'm Tuki face. <laughs> Master Clem. That'll be a cold word for those people with some handshakes. The Dookie faces. <laughs> for real. Eric, let me know um, if if uh if I'm still breaking up. Maybe I'm a little bit too far away from the uh microphone or the positioning of it. Right. This is what we have to deal with. So, you know, we have so much to deal with, and we have to have our spirit of discernment up full force, you know? Okay, take your master glam. <laughs> Doodle head. <laughs> you call, used to call somebody that. Thank you, Eric. Let me know. I'm not going to be on that much longer, but I want the message to come through. I'm not saying I have a written down message. It's just babbling right now. You no. Know? And, and we, we have to make sure to be centered even if you have, you need a day. I'm, I'm going to say this. You need a day, at least one day. And I know it could be hard when you have children, you have a job, weird working hours, you got to do the, for a time that you know you have that you cater to yourself. You may have a significant other, right? You may have those who you know, who's close to you, whatever, and you keep each other happy, which we sh should be only responsible for our own happiness, right? But you need a time to yourself to cater to yourself and to do for yourself, to really pat yourself on the back. An emotional and mental, spiritual reward time. Things might be a little tight, but there's a kind of piece of cake you want, you go and you get it. You sit down and take the time and enjoy it. You're going to put your feet in the sand by the beach and walk for two hours and Walk as far as you want to walk, then turn around and come back. If that's all it is, do that. If you want to curl a couch, everybody's gone, or everybody's sleeping, listen to music on YouTube or just your collection. Just do that. You see? That's very important to do to keep your mind straight for the times we're in. Because everything is not going to happen at the same time. Because there's a lot of fear-mongering going on. And like I said, there are enemies out here who are having a ball like an all-you-can-eat buffet. All for the fear that they're conjuring up. Past that, we're not going to be blasted off the earth. Some of it may be. Yeah, it may happen. 
But we as a people and our spiritual connectedness, we're going to last. And we're going to be here forever because they're, we're the original people that are here. And we shouldn't think in their level of time because what's in store for us as we pass this test and this journey, there's so much greater rewards. We can pick our teeth with what they bring to us because we're winners and we're champions and we're going to win in the end. It may be a little tough, but this is an obstacle course. And just like that college test that you take, a college placement test, this is a placement test for eternity. I'm not talking no Christian stuff. I'm talking about this little short life, this little short pit stop of a life is merely a pit stop to eternity. And we're being evaluated right now for our placement, right? So everything we think that somebody got over on us or something that happened to us that brings us this emotional pain, a little bit of frustration, trust me, this universe is perfectly balanced. If you don't think so, go out in nature. There's a lot of nature around here in Africa, right? Probably a little more because they're destroying so much in America. And they're doing things in the cities here. When I go up to that property, and Mrs. Skurv is getting the garden and stuff on the property, and we have all the fruits and it's going to grow on, and I go up on that balcony, and I sit down, and I just look down. I'm like, I really see how it's a mind game with these people and us. They don't want us to realize how great we are and how much potential we have that we can and will succeed in. Anyway, I'm, I'm kind of rambling right now. I'm feeling it. Um, I would usually take off one of the days during the weekend, but I'm probably going to run through and do um, some shows, do some content. I want to go walk around Accra, show you a different part of Accra. And during the week, we're going to go up to the property where we're building. I'll show you those things too. Um, like we said with Miko, which was driving in the car. My voice is getting sore, right? Even if you're not moving as fast as you were moving before, at least you're moving. Every blow is not a knockout blow. Just keep yourself focused and just keep yourself moving forward and trust and know. Not no trust and believe, but trust and know that everything is going to be all right. Anyway, much love to you all. I just came out of the chat room. We see Master Glam, Tracy J. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fresh Dookie always shows back up. <laughs> Queen Midas, Master Glam. Q Butter, much love to you, brother. Um, Raw reality, masculine. Yeah, let's wrap this down. We've been on here for a little while. I'll come back with some more. I got content that I made. I got new graphics. I want to do all these crazy stuff, the stuff programs I have to learn because I'm just getting on this Apple computer and I love it. But it's like driving in somebody's car, right? And you're used to the shift being in the middle, but the shift is in the, in the column and you're driving this car. You see the shift, you see it, but you grab for the one between the seats and you grab air. <laughs> so sometimes I'm trying to do certain things. I'm like, whoa, this ain't a PC no more. So much love to you all. The studio is coming on beautiful. And um, I can't wait in a few months to display it. But once it's done, I have to work my magic. And, you know, I have some carpentry skills too, right? But I'll show you when, I, when you see it. Anyway, much love to you all. I will talk to you tomorrow. We have stuff uploading every day. Um, this weekend, and we're going to do some nice walking talks. Mrs. Skirp is back there talking on the phone. I got a bone to pick with her. She's supposed to come out here and show her face and talk, but, you know, it's Friday, so let her have her fun. Anyway, much love to you all. I will talk to you tomorrow. <laughs>
John Hawkins showed up in our country, telling us of a land filled with luxury. He said, black man, follow me to America. There you'll find more gold for your labor. Our foreparents were tricked onto his boat. Since that time we've been wrestling with the gold. We landed here in Jamestown, Virginia. Four hundred years to suffer. So my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is black man hell. When the slave master wanted to have some sport, he would heap on our parents' cruelties of the worst sort, burn them at stake, hang them on trees. His ears were deaf to our parents' pleas. Though you were pregnant, black woman, you pulled the plow like a horse, like a dog, even a cow. He filled your womb with his wicked seed. His half white children you were made to breed. Oh, my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven is a black man hell. So called Negro, open up your eyes. Black man everywhere is on the rise. He has kicked the white man out of Asia. And he's going fast out of Africa with every ounce of strength and breath. His cries give us liberty or give us death. The whole black world has their eyes on you to see what the so-called Negro is going to do. So my friend, it's easy to tell. Our unity will give the white man hell. God made a promise to Abraham His seed would be a stranger in a foreign land They would suffer and be afflicted Four hundred years But he would come and Wipe away the tears our god and savior allah has come he has declared the white man's day is done he has given us a divine messenger one prophesied to come his name is elijah we now can stand up the whole world to tell our God has come to give us heaven and take the devil into Why are we called Negroes? Why are we deaf, dumb, and blind? Why is everybody making progress, yet we seem to be lagging so far behind? Why are we mistreated? Why are we in this condition, stripped of our names, our language, our culture, our God? and our religion. Here in America, all of our religious training has been gotten by the preacher. He has told us of a heaven way up in the sky that we can't enjoy now, but rather after we die. But all of the years that we're living, 
For us there's nothing but hell, pain, torture, and giving. Yet the Bible speaks of a heaven filled with material luxury, which the white man and the preacher has right here, so we see. So my friend, take it for what it's worth. Your heaven and your hell is right here on this earth. So let's turn back into history, which rewards all research and tells us plainly. Before the white man gained entry to the east, he was living in the caves of Europe, a ravenous beast, eating juniper roots and eating flesh raw, till God sent Moses to civilize him and teach him the law. Then following Popolo, an explorer, he gained entry into Asia and Africa. From China he took silk and gunpowder. From India he took jute, manganese and rubber. He raped Africa of her diamonds and her gold. From the Mideast he took barrels of oil untold. Raping, robbing and murdering everything in his path. The whole black world has tasted of the white man's wrath. So my friend, it's not hard to tell. A white man's heaven is a black man's hell. America, we were living in the east by the Nile River. We were living in luxury, enjoying freedom, justice, and equality. We wore silken robes and slippers of gold. We were the wealthiest and the wisest people, I'm told. Now we are the poorest of the poor. Nobody wants us at their door. So my friend, it's easy to tell. White man heaven, black man hell. When the white man came to America, he told the Indian, I am your white brother, he said, red man, I'll treat you the best, yet and still he pushed the Indian further west, with his white woman and fire water, with tricks and lies he stole America, the original owner of this nation, is cooped up on a reservation, so my friend it's easy to tell, white man heaven is black man hell. He needed someone to work the land, his back was too weak, he needed you black man, so he cautioned Sir John Hawkins to commit the world's most grievous sin, to take a man who's born to be free and bring him down to slavery, to sell a man as merchandise. On his body put a price Oh my friend it's easy to tell White man heaven is black man hell 